How many plushies do I own is a naive question I asked myself one day. For the past, uh, six, seven years, my plush collections have exclusively been the plushies that I had acquired in the last year, rather than just going over everything again. However, it's been, like I said, six or so years since I've done that, so I figured for this year, why not do it again? There is an alternate cut in the description that exclusively goes over the plushies I had collected within the last year. So if you want to just skip all the things you may have potentially already seen over the course of the years, you are more than welcome to just click on that version of the description and, you know, watch it. However, if you're in it for the long haul, uh, get ready, because guess what? I have a lot of these guys. Too many. Possibly, actually, no, not even possibly. It is definitely too many. Way too many of these things. And you never know, this might be the largest documentation of all the plushies I own ever. So we're gonna do it. It's gonna, it's gonna happen. As you can tell, I'm in a different room today because <laughs> the room that I'm gonna need to fit all these guys is quite large. But I guess we can start with the basics. Here is the first plush I ever obtained when I was a little, little tyke. Got this little guy, it's a Winnie the Pooh plushie. Uh, you've probably seen me explain this in other videos, potentially. But if you haven't, uh, there it is. I'm going to be splitting this uh, video up into sections, obviously like I normally do. However, I'm not starting with Brian's Freddy's this time, so you're either gonna have to watch everything or just skip to the timestamp in the timeline, but you know. Uh, we're skip sort of making a table of contents here. We're starting off with Angry Birds, I'm going to Mario, Sonic, uh, FNAF, Customs, nah, Miscellaneous, because the Customs are getting mixed in there. Miscellaneous, uh, and then, uh, Original Characters. So yeah, starting off, here's the Red Angry Bird. Uh, this was obviously the very start of my channel, the very first video was Angry Birds, so even if this section isn't super large, I still felt like it owed its own section. So here is the Red Angry Bird, made by Commonwealth, which, I think pretty much all of these are made by Commonwealth, so I'm not gonna repeat myself. Here is the yellow Angry Bird, or Chuck. You can kind of tell these are old as hell because they're very uh, weathered. I think these are oh, definitely over a decade old. I want to say 12, 13 years old. Very old. Here are the three blue Angry Birds, one of them being a second gen uh, blue bird. Uh, if you want any sort of meaningful documentation on Angry Birds plushies, please watch the channel Maximus Overdrive. That dude is scary and he's found so many unseen prototypes if you have any interest in this uh watch them this one actually does have a sound chip i don't know if it works nope i doubt any of them do to be honest here is bomb bird or bomb and here's a second bomb bird this one being a lot smaller and still having the tush tag not for retail sale these are the ones that would come in the claw machines rather than ones you could buy obviously retail uh, I actually think this is a Good Stuff one, because I believe, from what I know, Good Stuff did sell Angry Birds, did actually distribute Angry Birds plushies, they're just sort of worse quality reprints of the Commonwealth ones. Here is Matilda. Um, this is actually the Valentine's Day Matilda. Um, my original Matilda, I actually don't know where it went. Um, but yeah, the original Matilda that went with the blue, red, bomb, and chuck, I don't know, but this is the one I just use, use, uh... <laughs> because obviously Matilda's a girl and her design has been added the pink accents and this just looks more accurate to how her design is modernized. Here is the first generation How or Green Bird plush. Uh, you can tell because it has the specific eyes and the beak opens. I believe the second generation had the beak closed and then they switched to the Angry Birds chrome design, something along those lines. Here is Terrence or the Big Brother Bird, Big Red, whatever your nickname form is. This was one of the first, actually, well, Hal is obviously the first one I bought retail. This was the second one I bought retail. His sound box obviously does not work, but this is also Commonwealth, so yeah. Here is the orange bird, or Bubbles. I love this little guy. He's definitely one of my favorite Angry Birds. I love him. Also, before I move on, here is the giant inflatable Bubbles. Uh, no more sound chip in this guy. He has been, uh, I think, unstuffed for, I don't remember what I did that for. I think maybe I was just angry one day. I don't know, but either way, he's still in pretty decent condition. I, I, these are all in old. I don't think these were going to be preserved if I hadn't, unless I hadn't played with them at all, which I did, so. This sound box still works! I think you can tell it's Nightmare Fuel, though, Jesus Christ. Here is Pink Bird, or Stella. 
This is actually the Stella variant of this plush, not from the original Angry Birds line. Uh, the actual original Stella I had, I believe I gave to a family member, uh, because I just didn't really care about Angry Birds at that point, but I actually recently repurchased this one just because I felt like my collection was kind of incomplete without her. Um, and I actually really like this version more because the original Angry Birds classic one feels oddly objectified, if that's the right word. I don't know why she's given like a light skin stare, it's a little scary. Here is a 8 inch red bird plush, uh, obviously that is just the red bird plush but bigger. Sound box doesn't work. These ones are just kind of gonna go all over the place because I've lost some over the years, just don't have them anymore. Here is the wizard chuck. Looks pretty neat, in the Halloween line. Here are two of the space bluebirds. Never bought a third one, but I think this one actually was given to me by my cousin. Here is the Space Terrence, or Incredible Terrence, as some people may call him. Here is the Ice Bird. One of my favorites, honestly. I like Ice Bird. Here's a couple from Angry Birds Rio. We have Jules. Missing the flower in her hair. Here is Nico, who's missing the bottle cap. A lot of accessories as a kid I used to like to cut off because I like to take them on off. And guess what? They got lost because these are, like I said, like 12 years old. And here's Pedro. No idea why they made Nico and Pedro because they're not in the game. Here are four birds from Angry Birds Star Wars. First up, we have Luke Skywalker Bird, which is uh, played by Red. And then we have Han Solo Bird, who is played by Chuck. And then we have Princess Leia Bird, who is played by Stella. And lastly, we have Chewbacca Bird, who is played by Terrence, and he's very, very fluffy. A large majority of my Angry Birds plushies were gotten in claw machines, so they don't have the sound boxes. Because I actually used to be really good at them, and I feel like they used to not be as rigged as they kind of are now. He's missing one of his teeth! Dang, poor Terrence. Or Chewbacca, or whatever. Here are four plushies from the Angry Birds movie. Here's Movie Red. A little cursed, to be honest, but kind of all of them are. Here's Movie Chuck. Here's Movie Bomb. And here is Movie Mighty Go! Okay, I'm sorry, guys. Not gonna lie, I don't really think about these guys that much anymore, but the overwhelming urge to buy that re-release of the Mighty Eagle that's like slightly smaller, but still pretty big compared to the other Angry Birds, it's, it's overtaking my soul. I just, it's so close, but so far. Scooting the camera slightly. Now we're on to the piggies, the pigs, the pigs. Here are two normal pig plushies. One of them styled to look like the, uh, I don't remember what his name is. The, it's the pig from Bad Piggies with the freckles. But yeah, one of them is styled to look like that. These are two normal pig plushies as well as a eight inch normal pig plush. And then we have two helmet pig plushies, one with and one without the helmet. Again, this is a, a product of me cutting the helmet off and then losing it. However, this one I never cut off because I bought a second one for that exact reason because I lost the helmet. And I was like, well, now I don't have a helmet. Well, my helmet thing was stupid. So I bought a second one and now I have them with the helmet, thank God. Here are two. I like how we keep these things in twos, mustache pigs. Nothing really different about these. I think this is just a smaller re-release with the sound chip. This is the claw machine one that's bigger. Yeah. <laughs> and lastly, you're not gonna believe this, two king pig plushies, one without the crown and one with the crown. I had some self-control on my king pig. Clearly not enough though, because his crown has deteriorated really bad over the years. That is why it is covered in a layer of scotch tape. So it preserves its look. You peel that tape off, the entire crown will deteriorate. It'll crumble like dust. This is again, just a smaller one without the crown. Again, I think a lot of these duplicates come from my cousin giving me a lot of his Angry Bird plushies. Thank you, cousin. Uh, I don't know if you want your name doxed. I said it so many times, I was there, Aiden. Thank you, Aiden. Here is the uh, love, I don't remember, the, the Valentine's Day pig with the bow. It's the king pig with the bow. But yeah, there, there that is. Here is Nigel from Angry Birds Rio and the Marmoset which is slightly bigger, and I believe this is the 8-inch variant. Here are three Stormtrooper Pig plushies. I believe I had up to six at one point, but again, I just kind of lost them over the years. I think this is my original one. Then again, I could be wrong. They look virtually identical. I think I just kept winning them over and over again in claw machines, and I was like, might as well keep winning them. I mean, they, they look cool. Here is the Darth Vader Pig. Figured out a way you can lock the focus on this camera now. 
These are not Angry Birds, however, they are two classic mobile game characters, so I figured I'd throw them in here. Here is a plush of Om Nom from Cut the Rope. And here is a plush of the Apple from Fruit Ninja. I think I just got these back in the day because I wanted them, so... Yeah, they are. Cool. And here are all the plushies of the Angry Birds and Bad Piggies from the, well, uh, Angry Birds franchise. There they all are. And obviously, uh, you know, those guys back there. All right, next up is Super Mario, starting with uh, Mario. Here is a Sané, uh, maybe Little Buddy distributed Mario. Ignore those on the side. This is my second Mario because this is my first Mario. This is a new Super Mario Bros. Wii Mario. I don't remember who released this, um, but this was my very first one. You can tell by how saggy he is. Here's a larger Mario. I'm not exactly sure who made this. Maybe Kelly Toy? Some arcade company. This is for car or carnivals or arcades. Here's a Cat Mario plush. This is a World of Nintendo uh, Cat Mario. Here is also a, another World of Nintendo Mario. This is the 8-bit Hello Mario. Here's the World of Nintendo Baby Mario. Here is the World of Nintendo Metal Mario. This one's had a little bit of yellowing over the years. This one was in the FNAF Plush episode, episode 10, Return of Mario, and he became Evil Metal Mario. Here is the Mario All-Star Collection, Metal Mario. Much better plush, to be honest. Looks more like Mario, and also doesn't have, like, weird, like, plasticky fabric, and more, like, smoother fabric. Looks nice. And also by Sané, I think this is just a Dr. Mario plush. I don't think this is a All-Star Collection Mar Dr. Mario, but this is the one that they made. I am Dr. Mario, and I am saving lives. I looked. Next up is my boy Luigi. This is from the same set that the Mario comes from. I think this is actually from like that weird transitional period between the first set of Mario plushies Sané did and the All-Star Collection. I think I got them right within that window. So I don't think this is an All-Star Collection Luigi or Mario. Here's another big Luigi that uh, is the same series as the big Mario, and we can find out who made these guys. Uh, Good Stuff made these. Oh, Good Stuff made these. Here is Cat Luigi from World Nintendo. Here's Baby Luigi from World Nintendo. I like these versions of the baby plushies a lot because they have the shorts, like how they do in Partners in Time, where the best baby appearance, maybe besides Yoshi's Island, I don't know. Here's a custom Goo Luigi from Luigi's Mansion 3. Kind of morbid. This actually, like the Mario over there, is my first Luigi plush that I just used and customized into uh, Goo Luigi. However, the reason I did this, I believe this one was horribly disfigured because it got damaged really badly, so I wanted to at least salvage him to a degree. And here is the Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon uh, Poltergust Luigi, which I got exclusively for the Poltergust. It's actually a lot bigger than the other Luigi. You can kind of tell. Wow. I tried pairing the burrs up where applicable. Next up, we'll do the sort of uh, tertiary hero slash uh, Companion of Mario is Yoshi! Yoshi! I think this Yoshi is either the standard little buddy uh, Yoshi from like the early 2010s slash the new Super Mario Bros. Wii Yoshi. I don't know. This guy didn't come with a touch tag. Here's a Goldie Yoshi. My first Yoshi, actually. Here's the new Super Mario Bros. Wii Blue Yoshi. The new Super Mario Bros. Wii Yellow Yoshi. And who would have guessed it? The new Super Mario Bros. Wii, Pink Yoshi. Big dirt stain on her. Here is a bunch of these bootleg little baby Yoshi plushies I got, which I believe are trying to be Mario Party 5 Yoshis. Uh, you got, oh, I dropped one. You got green, got yellow, you got blue, you got pink, got black, you got <gasps> red. Uh, they all have little magnets in their hands so they can uh, link together, kind of or hold hand, hold their own hands together. So, yeah. Next up we have the Citizen of the Mushroom Kingdom. Uh, Toad! This is the All-Star Collection, uh, standard red toad. Here is the Goldie Toad missing his vest. Again, a product of me wanting to cut off accessories, and then I never find them again. Here's Captain Toad. Again, the little red fellow we've all come to know and love. Here's the All-Star Collection Blue Toad. 
and then Buckenberry and Aligo gold, 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 gold from New Super Mario Bros. Wii. Or the blue and yellow toad. Uh, I don't have an all-star yellow toad, sorry guys. The royal court is now in session! Uh, here, here's, here's Peach. This is the all-star collection, Peach. Yeah. Here's the all-star collection, Daisy. I love this one, because Daisy's my favorite character, and they made her so silly. Why does she look like that? I got too excited. Here's the all-star collection, Baby Peach. I wanted to complete the collection of babies. I'm still, there's still no official Baby Wario, though, so I don't have that. We're just going all sorts out of order. Here's a bootleg Daisy that is uh, based off of the first Daisy plush that was made by Sané back in the day. And here's the first Rosalina plush that was, in fact, made by Sané back in the day. This is one of the very miraculous times where you order a plush off of Amazon and it's actually not bootleg! Whoa! She's got a third, a, a third, a second high! Whoa! You're never gonna see that normally, but that's cool they did that. I guess they were kind of worried about kids flipping this up and seeing absolutely nothing under there, being, like, traumatized. And next up, we have the anti-heroes of the Mushroom Kingdom, Wario and Waluigi! Uh, yeah, there they are. This is the uh, first Wario that Sané made. Actually, second, I guess, if you don't count the uh, Mario Party 5 Wario. But yeah, this is uh, not the All-Star Collection one, which has a much smaller head and a much larger body. I think this Waluigi was also one of these sort of in-betweeners, where it was like right at the end of them making your standard Mario plushies, and right before they started making their All-Star Collection ones, because I don't remember this being an All-Star Waluigi. And then we have Donkey Kong from the uh, oldest Mario set, the first Sané set. Give me thumbs! Let me know if you get that reference. I, that, that is a really obscure Mario Plush Channel reference set. You might not understand, because they haven't uploaded in a long time. Here's the World Nintendo, Baby Donkey Kong. Yeah. Pretty cool. This is the only Baby Donkey Kong plush that is official, and I actually don't I think it's in existence, because I don't think there's a bootleg on this guy. Here is the All-Star Collection Diddy Kong. Yeah. And now we have Bowser! This is the first Bowser uh, released by Sané after the Mario Party 5 incident of 2008. I don't know. Either way, here he is in all his glory. Pretty dang cool. However, the Bowser plush I use more modernly is this one, which is a giant version of that plush. A lot more accurate to Bowser's real scale, especially in the modern games. Really love this guy. I'm super happy I managed to get him too, because I think this was, again, another more modern, miraculous Amazon purchase that happened to be official. You don't get that super often. Usually you end up with bootlegs. Don't talk to me or my son ever again. I'm really happy I got to fit them back there because I didn't think I was going to. Here's the Sané All-Star Collection Dry Bowser, and God, I love this plush so much. He is so cool. He's got that big beak kind of skull that uh, Dry Bowser has. So much detail, so much cool geometry. Like, God, this is awesome. Gotta be one of my favorite Mario plushes, along with the uh, Daisy, All-Star Daisy, because... I like Daisy. Here's the bootleg uh, Dark Bowser plush from Mario and Luigi Bowser's Inside Story. This is, again, the, the sort of bleed over where bootleggers just kind of make real characters instead of uh, making just the same ones that everyone else is making but knockoffs. And you know what? It's cool because it opens a new market and it gives us more characters that we never actually get to see. Here's the Sané All-Star Collection Bowser Jr. And the first release of Kamek, the little buddy slash Sané Kamek from the early 2010s. Wow. All right, there's what I classify to be the main Mario characters. So now we're just gonna move on. Here's a bunch of uh, into heroes slash extra good guys. Here is the Stork from Yoshi's Island or a Stork Beanie Baby that I just called the Stork from Yoshi's Island. Here is Cappy or a custom Cappy. I think this is a hat from a Goldie Mario that I just uh, cut off his head and stuck eyes on. I guess these two would be considered to be anti-heroes. Here's a bootleg Nabbit uh, that has the bag on the wrong side of him because I cut it off and then my uh, family sewed it on and now it's just kind of in the wrong spot. Also, here is a Birdo. I think this is just a standard Birdo from, like I said, the early 2010s set. Yay! Not a bootleg, shockingly. Couple of the Kongs. Here's a Dixie Kong without a shirt. This is a bootleg. Don't ask me where the shirt went. I don't know. Here's a custom Cranky Kong that was from my first Donkey Kong plush that used to be a little zipper keychain guy that I uh, gave him the Cranky Kong fit. And here is an orange monkey long plush that, uh, who would have guessed? It's Lanky Kong. Woo! And here is a red bob -omb. Cause as you know, in Super Mario 64, the red bob are the good guys and the black bob are the bad guys. Uh, but this is from World Nintendo. Kinda cool they made a red bob because I never expected them to. 
I think I'll start with the sort of main Mario antagonist. Uh, well, okay, secondary Mario antagonist, and then we'll move on to other just basic enemies. Here's a custom of King K. Rule that I made. Pretty neat. The gold on the belly. Uh, not my cleanest custom, but I still think he looks pretty good. And then here's my first attempt at a custom King K. Rule. I reused the cape for that guy. Uh, but this is obviously based off of Luigi Fan's custom of King K. Rule, which uses a uh, Louis the Alligator plush from Princess and the Frog. But then I just decided to make one from scratch, because, eh, I like that. I like that more. Actually, that really obscure reference I made earlier about Donkey Kong, I think that's actually where this custom idea originates from. So you're gonna have to find it. Here is Fawful from the Mario and Luigi series, a custom I made. Uh... Yeah, he was in both Superstar Saga and Bowser's Inside Story. And here is the Dark Star from Bowser's Inside Story. Uh, I gave him little two little holes in the back of him so I could kind of squish him around like he's a puppet. <laughs> Next up are these seven Koopalings. Here's Larry Koopa. All these are from the uh, original Little Buddy uh, Sane set. Here's Lemmy Koopa. One of my favorite Koopalings, personally. Here's Iggy Koopa. Here is Wendy O. Koopa. Here's Morton Koopa Jr. Another one. No! Another one of my personal favorite Koopalings. Here's Roy Koopa. And here is Ludwig von Koopa. I talk like Dracula from Sesame Street. <laughs> Here is Boom Boom and Pom Pom. Uh, here's another obscure fun fact about me. Boom Boom was an ongoing character that I used before my FNAF days and uh, made a couple videos with him. Uh, he was pretty cool, I liked this plush a lot. And this actually led to me being noticed by Mario Muffet Adventures. But this is actually really cool since this is before my FNAF days. This was also before their FNAF days. Uh, they gave me a shout out in one of their random videos. And this was back when they made Mario videos just with the Muffets. Uh, their little, little OC guys. So yeah, that's a pretty cool piece of history. Because like I said, none of this had to do with FNAF. This was all the pre-FNAF days. They just thought that random one-off video with Boom Boom was funny. So they decided to give me a shout out. Thanks guys, I uh, hope you M1 and M2 are off to doing cool things. And then here we got Petey's on the bridge, Petey's got a tan, Petey's on the bridge. Uh, another obscure Mario Plus show my reference. Tell me in the comments if you got it, guys! Oh, this is bootleg, by the way. I think this is the Super Mario DS set, but it is a bootleg of that set. I want to apologize, I forgot to stick this guy with the anti-heroes. Here's the Luigi's Mansion 2 Polter Pup. I believe this is also a bootleg, but it's okay, because he's cute. I also forgot this guy. This is the Poochie Amiibo. Yeah, there's an actual Poochie plush now, but uh, back when I got this guy, there wasn't. And he just looks really cute. So yeah, little Yoshi's Woolly World Poochie Amiibo. He's adorable. It's just the dogs. I keep forgetting the dogs. I'm sorry, guys. Mario, Mario dogs just don't come to my mind, I guess. Next up, we are finally getting to the enemy plushies. Jesus Christ. Here is the Goomba. Goomba. Uh, this is a keychain Goomba. I think I got this at Spencer's or Toys R Us or something. Um, a lot of these keychain plushies that I owned in my youth came from Spencer's because he just stays down there because that's just where they ended up going. Here's the more modern all-star collection Goomba, which just looks so much better than the other one. Because our mouth opens too, which is really neat. I like this guy a lot. Also, it's going to go for Here's a Paragoomba custom plush. Uh, I don't remember the channel's name, but back when the early, early days, uh, back when I was a small channel, again, before the FNAF era, uh, I entered a giveaway on a channel, and I won, and they sent me this little Goomba, so, yeah. Don't remember the channel's name off the top of my head, but pretty neat that I won. Here is a Goldie Koopa. Yep, the Goldie Koopa. I don't just have one Koopa, I have two Goldie Koopas. I don't just have two Goldie Koopas, I have three Goldie Koopas. I don't just have four Goldie Koopas. I have five Goldie Koopas, and I don't just have five Goldie Koopas, I have six Goldie Koopas, but this one's neck is broken. Here is a red Koopa plush that uh, the wings had broken off of, uh, which I guess technically was a pair of Koopa plush, but now it's a red Koopa plush because the wings are gone, so yeah. This is, again, from the first sort of early 2010s Mario plush set. 
And here's the more modern all-star Paracoupa, Paratroopa plushie. Koopa Paratroopa. Yeah, he's got a little hanging thing so you can make him go meow, meow, meow. Here is a bootleg Boo plush. Uh, I believe, again, this is based off of the uh, old 2010s Mario plush set. And here is an all-star Boo, which uh, again looks better, but honestly, I think I kind of prefer the, the early 2010s Boo. It just looks better. Not the bootleg, but the actual official one that looks good. He's just a little fat. Here is a Piranha Plant plush uh, with a bendable neck. Pretty dang neat. And here is a second one of that <laughs> that is very, very broken. Like, I don't even know what happened to him, but I, I he's very broken, unfortunately. Uh, yeah, yikes. At least I have one that's in good condition. Maybe I'll take, maybe I'll take this one and cut him off and patch him up and make him into little walking scene ones for Mario Wonder that goes to move back even more. Next up, we have a bootleg Lakitu plush based off of, again, the early 2010s Mario plush set. Uh, I cut him out of the cloud, I cut off his spiny, he's practically not even the same plush anymore, but it was bootleg, so I didn't really care because I wanted Mario characters to be able to ride in the cloud, and like I said, it's bootleg, so I didn't really care what happened to it. It's not like it needed to be in pristine condition or whatever. Here's a more updated Mario All-Star Collection, Lakitu plush. Not the same with the spiny that kind of dangles below him with the string, but has a uh, spike ball. He's pretty neat. Here are two little buddy, early 2010s Mario plush set, uh, Hammer Bros. Both the sitting variants. I believe this is my first one, and this was one I got in a lot with a couple other Mario plushes later down the line. Uh, I didn't do this. I think the hammer just probably fell off of this person's plush and they stitched it on the wrong side of the hand. I would know that feeling in certain Abbott uh, here, but yeah, there they both are. Pretty cool. I guess since we uh, just did Hammer Bro, here's Boomerang Bro with no boomerang, a bootleg. And again, this is back in that era where I just like to cut accessories off plushies. And guess what? I don't know where it is! I forgot! But yeah, here's a, uh, I guess just a blue nothing bro because he has nothing in his hand. He's nothing. He's a nothing bro. He's a bootleg bro. Here's a plush of Shy Guy. Again, from the old 2010s Little Buddy. I'm just gonna start calling the 2010 set the Little Buddy set. The Little Buddy set of Mario plushies, despite the fact that Little Buddy still uh, distributes most of the Santa plushies to America. But yeah, I'm gonna call it the Little Buddy set because I don't care. Here is a bootleg Dry Bones plush. I don't actually think this is based off anything. I think actually this is before any official dry bones are made. Is this guy. Pretty cool. Here's a plush of Fuzzy. I think this is also bootleg. But yeah. Here's a bootleg Wiggler plush. I like Wiggler a lot. But yeah, there's Wiggler. Bootleg though. Here is a Pokey. Move faster, Pokey! Uh, Mario joke wall. Uh, he's got beans, but this is actually not a bootleg. He's just really cool. I like him. Pokey. Here's a couple of aquatic life Mario characters. Here's the cheap, cheap plush, the little buddy set. Pretty old, but pretty cool. Uh, here's a blooper from that same set. I think he used to have a little string on him, but I cut it off, because insert young me here. And here is a Pokey Puffer. Uh, he's pretty dang big. He's got some stains on his butt, but he's old. He's got a lot of beans in him. He's pretty cool. Guess we'll get to the more mechanical question mark Mario enemies. Here's a bullet bill from the little buddy set. He has a string on him. I didn't cut this one off because he can fly around. He goes beep beep coming through. Here's a bootleg chain chomp. Air chomps. I'm just gonna reference like a bunch of old 2010s Mario videos at this point. Uh, actually, I think I've run out of those to reference, but yeah. Air chomps. Okay, I'm done now. I make a bit out of it, right? As I run out of ones to reference. Here's a Mecha Koopa plush from the little buddy set. Pretty cute. Not a bootleg, thankfully. I have a very mixed bag of bootlegs and non-bootlegs. And here is a little buddy, uh, bob -omb. I love him so much. He's so cute. Just look at him. Look at the way he sits and how dangly his legs are. And there we are. That is every single one of my Mario plushies. Uh, quite a few of them. And yet I don't make videos with any of them, pretty much. Lol. Welcome to what happens when the algorithm bites you in the ass with Five Nights at Freddy's for eight years. I don't know if I put Pokemon on my little table of context, but uh, we're doing Pokemon next. I'm gonna start off with my biggest ones. Uh, first up is Snorlax. 
These ones are not gonna be in any preset order outside of his biggest and then maybe by Jens. I believe that was made by Jazzwares. Here is the Build-A-Bear Glaceon with a little fur coat it comes with. I thought this was really cute, so I decided to pick it up. Here is the Tomy Charizard. Has cardboard wings, super big, super neat. Here is the Tomy Blastoise. Charizard, Charizard. Here is the Tomy Venusaur. Here's the WCT uh, Gengar. Here is, I think the Jazzwares Lapras might be Tomy. I don't know. Here's the WCT Detective Pikachu, Mr. Mime. Bendable arms, bendable legs. He's neat. Here's the Pokemon Center Lugia. Here's a bootleg Raikou. This really big bootleg Pokedoll Raikou. I don't know why he's so huge. I bought him expecting him to be like this big and then he's giant. And then I think I gave up on the legendary dogs after that. Here is the WCT Ampharos plush and the Tomy Tyranitar. I was finding them out by reading the touch tags as I showed them off. Here is the Pokemon Center Groudon plush. The Pokemon Center Kyogre plush. And the Pokemon Center Rayquaza plush. Here is a Pokemon Center Mega Rayquaza plush. This guy's huge. He's really neat though. He also bends, unlike the other Rayquaza, which just kind of sits there. Whoa. Here is the Pokemon Center Greninja plush. Super neat. Here's the Pokemon Center Decidueye plush with bending arms. Got like segmented arms. He's really neat looking. You can pose him. He looks awesome. Here's the Pokemon Center Incineroar with a somewhat poseable back. I think that's more for stability. Oh, it's the tail. I forgot. The tail can pose. Which is, I guess, also for stability. Don't have Primarina yet. I probably shouldn't say yet because then I'm going to be tempted to actually buy it. Here's the Pokemon Center Alolan Exeggutor with a bendable neck. He's really cool. Here is the Pokemon Center Necrozama, which was majorly featured in Endless Inferno. This is back in the day when I didn't really care how relevant a plush was relevant to like the FNAF lore. I just thought, wow, this Necrozma plush I got at Nintendo World is so cool. I should put him in a movie. Which I mean, worked, I guess, but it's also a Pokemon in a FNAF movie. Here is a plush of Mel Metal. Super cool guy. He's got like swiveling arms, all this cool metallic fabric. He's just a neat guy. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah. Here's a plush from Pokemon Center of Inteleon. I guess I forgot to mention that uh, that last guy was also from Pokemon Center. But yeah, Pokemon Center Inteleon. The entire thing is bendable. The arms, the legs, the tail, the neck. This guy's awesome. I like Inteleon, one of my favorite uh, final Evos as of recent. Here's a plush of Cinderus, also likewise. Bendable in almost all of its entire parts. The arms, the legs, the neck, the body. Neato. And lastly for the big guys, we have a... Ooh, almost under the camera. Lastly for the big guys, we have a Rylaboom plush. Huge guy, bendable in the arms, a little in the legs, and that's about it. He can do a crutch, I think. Yeah, he can crunch a little. Ah, big, big guy, big guy. This is uh, back when I was gonna collect every Pokemon plush. <laughs> like a moron. I barely even got the room for the guys I have. Almost forgot about the Pokemon Center Obstagoon. Again, just poseable in a lot of the parts of its body. Really neat guy. All right, now with the smaller guys, we're gonna attempt to go by generation. Here is Charmander, Pokemon Center. Uh, I guess I should also put this here. This is a Tomy Pokeball. I believe. Here's a Pokemon Center Squirtle. No little guy. Here's a Poke Doll of Squirtle. Here is the Tomy Bulbasaur and a Poke Doll of Bulbasaur. Fun fact: I actually got this and the other, the Squirtle and this next one, uh, all for the Smash Bros. stuff back way, way back in the day. And then I ended up going getting the Squirtle and the Bulbasaur to sort of repercuss for that fact. Because the Poke Dolls kind of look dumb. Speaking of which, here's a Poke Doll of Charizard. This guy's cute. And they're cute, but like they're not like really like cool Pokemon. Here is a just kind of random carnival plush of Pikachu. I'm so famous! Yeah, there's this little guy. Very adorable. I like him. Here's a WCT Detective Pikachu plush. Really neat. Ryan Reynolds. 
There's the Hasbro Vivisaur, I believe? Very old. Neat. Here's the Pokemon Sitting Cuties Charmeleon. Here's these little tiny War Turtle by an unknown manufacturer. Uh, I got the War Turtle and the Ivysaur back when I was again trying to collect a lot of Pokemon plushies, but this was before Sitting Cuties existed, so I didn't have either of those as an option. And then I waited long enough and they eventually came out with the Sitting Cuties Charmeleon and I just ended up getting that one. I'm kind of jumping all over the place here, I apologize, but here's a bootleg Raichu. I think this is just a standard Pokemon Center one or a Poke Doll. I don't know, but it's bootleg, I know that. Here's a Pokemon Center Jigglypuff. Really cute. Here's a Tomy Magikarp. Here's a sort of, I think, another like carnival plushy Meowth. Uh, wait, there's the Tush Tag still on this one. Um, dang, this was made in October of 2011. That's crazy. Uh, this is from Toy Factory. That's a name you don't hear very often nowadays. Here's a Tomy Snorlax or Slowpoke. I'm stupid, guys. I'm sorry. Here's a WCT Ditto. Be neat. Here's a Pokemon Center Chansey. Here's the set of four KFC Pokemon plushies. There's one of Dratini. There's one of Vulpix. There's one of Steel, which I really like. And there's one of Zubat. Really cool. Again, before it's sitting cuties, so I just got these guys. I feel like it's a lot less fun to try and collect one of every Pokemon plush now, because, like, they just make all of them now. You just get them all as the sitting cuties. Like, it takes all the fun out of it. Here is a Pokemon Center Dragonite plush and a bootleg of that exact same plush. Can you tell which one I got first? Here are the three legendary birds from the Pokemon Sitting Cuties line. Here's Articuno. Here is Zapdos. And here is Moltres. Really cool plush. Here is a bootleg Pokedoll Mew. Not much to say about that, but I still think he's adorable. And a Pokemon Center Mewtwo, I think. Maybe Santa made this, actually. I'm not sure. He's got beans in his tail. And in his butt. But, yeah, in his feet. Just a really cool Mewtwo plush. I think this is my favorite Mewtwo plush. He's really neat looking. Moving on to Gen 2, we have the Tomy Pichu plush. Here's a plush of Wobbuffet. Tomy. If he's not Gen 2, I'm going to feel really stupid. This is where I kind of start to lose track, to be honest with you guys. I'm not a Gen 1-er. I'm just not as much of a diehard Pokemon fan as I used to be. Uh, next up, we have Slowking, Pokemon Center. Real neat. Here's two Pokemon Center plushies of Umbreon and Espeon. Very cute. I love these little guys. Two of some of my favorite evolutions. I still need to get a Sylveon, because that is my actual favorite evolution. I just don't have one for some reason. Uh, here is a Pokemon Sitting Cuties Porygon 2. I think the original Porygon was out of stock when I bought this. Here is a bootleg Lugia. I think this was the poke, like a really old Pokemon Center one. Maybe a Poke Doll? I don't think that looks so good because it doesn't have the Poke Doll eyes. I'm gonna give my best guess for Gen 3. Here we have a Poke Doll of Mudkip. Cute little guy. We have the uh, Detective Pikachu Ludicolo. It makes noise. You shut up now. Here's a bootleg Pokemon Center Krogunk. Here's a Pokemon Sitting Cuties Metagross. Just a really cool looking guy. Here's a super old Deoxys that I don't know who made. Again, I think I got this before the Sitting Cuties guys came out. I just thought it looked really neat. And then we have the Sitting Cuties of the three Reggies. Reggie Rock. Reggie Ice. And Reggie Steel. And now there's like three more Reggies, but I don't have plushies in any of those. Sorry, guys. I say that as if Reggie Gigas literally wasn't in Gen 4. Speaking of Gen 4, here's the only two Gen 4 plushies I have. Here's a plush of Lucario. I think this is... Pocket Monsters. I have no idea what line that is. And here's a plush of uh, Manaphy. I think I got this... I think in a random lot. It's a Ban Presto, though. That's pretty cool. I have this little string. But yeah. Manaphy plush, really cute. Now we're to the generations that I was an active participant in because I was alive and I played Pokemon. Uh, first up is Gen 5. We have a Tepig plush by Tomy, and his little tail's all out of whack, but there's Tepig. Here is a Oshawott plush by, I think, 
WCT, but they don't have it labeled on here. Who made these? I don't know. They don't say, it just says Pokemon. I don't know. But here's an Oshawott. Here's a plush of Servine, a very old Ben Presto Servine that uh, ended up getting torn up sadly. Here is a Tomy Pansage. Super old. A Ben Presto Reshiram, which I actually don't think is Bootleg. I think this is also a Poke Doll. Correct me if I'm wrong. And here is a Tomy Rotom. Next up is Gen 6. Here is a Tomy Chestpin. A Tomy Fennekin. Uh, no Froakie though, because if you know exactly who I was associated with around 2018, you would know why. Here is the Tomy Halucha. This is one of the first Pokemon I think revealed for Gen 6 and wasn't the starters, and uh, I bought him because they made a plush of him and he's really neat. And here is a Pokemon Center Magearna. I love this one. Magearna grew on me a lot after I was exposed to her. I think she's one of my favorite legendaries? Mythicals? I don't know. Within that genre. She's one of my favorites now. I really like her. Or them. Wait. I'm sorry, Magearna. I have to look at your Twitch tag. It's a Pokemon Center plush. I'm sorry. Almost forgot about this one. Pokeboo! This is just such a cute little Gen 6 Pokemon. Definitely one, definitely one of the gems of Gen 6. Now on to Gen 7. Here is a plush from Tomy of Rowlet. Here is a plush of Litten, also by Tomy. And here is a plush of Poplio, also from Tomy. It's really funny with my Pokemon plush videos, because you can kind of tell as the generations get ushered in, because we sho shoehorned these guys in as new characters during Season 2 of the Classic series, and because uh, that was the new game with Gen 7. Here is a Tomy plush of Stuffle. You got the fake tush tag on there, because that's for the actual Pokemon. They put a tush tag on the Pokemon. Isn't that adorable? And now we have Beware. I hung. I don't know what's brand name. But... Pokemon Center, uh, Beware. Cool. Here's a Tomy Polisand. Little hole. <gasps> that's kind of gross, guys. <laughs> Anyways, uh, I forgot your name. Pokemon Center, whatever this thing is. Uh,. I got nothing. Here's a Tomy Mimikyu. Really like Mimikyu. Good guy. Really iconic Pokemon. It really is just the Pika clone of Gen 7. Actually, no, that was... Dedene? Oh, wait, that was Gen 6. Maybe? Maybe. I don't know, whatever. It was a Pikachu clone, but they gave it a gimmick, so people liked it more. Here's a Pokemon Center. Cosmog. Really neat what they were printing in the gradient. It's neat. The Pokemon Center Marshadow. Also really neat what they did the gradient printing in here. Really cool, he's got the shadow, the respect is in his feet. Almost forgot about these two. Here is a Tomy Charger Bug. Uh, well, it goes down there. And here is a Pokemon Center Alolan Ponyta. So cute. Look how fluffy it is. I like this one a lot. Pretty sure this was the in-between. So here is the Pokemon Center Melma Meltan. Really cute little guy. Metallic fabric's nice. I just remembered that that was Galarian Ponyta and that was supposed to be in the Gen 8 section, but who cares? All right, now on to Gen 8, which actually takes up quite a few slots. Here's the Pokemon Center, uh, Sobble. I love him. I love Sobble. Good guy. The Pokemon Center, Scorbunny. Very fluffy. Here is the Pokemon Center, uh, Grookey. That's his name. <laughs> Here's the Pokemon Center, Drizzle. I think I bought all the Medievos out of obligation. I mean, they're all right. I just don't really care about them. Here's the Pokemon Center Thwacky. This guy's kind of funny. And the Pokemon Center Raboot, which to be honest is the best of the Medievos in this gen, but still kind of meh. Here is the Tomy Wooloo. Really cute, so fluffy, so very fluffy. Here's the Pokemon Center uh, Yamper. That might've actually been a Pokemon Center Wooloo. I don't know, but. It had this, some scratchy fabric, so I thought it might have been Tomy. Here's the Pokemon Center Corviknight. Here's the Pokemon Center Crawdan? No. I don't remember. Here is the Pokemon Center Galarian Farfetch'd Evolution. It's Surfetch'd. I don't know why it's a Galarian. I just kind of tried to say that this is Surfetch'd. Here is the Galarian Weezing. Really cool. 
big old top hat, and I'm Doug Dim Dom. I'm Dim Dale Dim Dom Dim Dim Dim. And lastly, a little bendable Pokemon Center Toxtricity, because I really like this Pokemon. But uh, I think I, I think this was my breaking point. This is one of the more recent Pokemon plushies I got. This is my breaking point. I was not about to buy another huge Pokemon plush. I have too many big ones. Here are all of my Pokemon plushies. Quite a lot. Again, probably too many, but there they all are. Nonetheless. There's a bunch kind of in the corner. Wall. Okay, we are running out of room really fast, but uh, it's okay, because next up is Sonic the Hedgehog! I'm moving the camera. First, we're starting off with the very first Sonic I got, this little keychain Sonic. I don't know who made it. That I got from Spencer's. Don't go to the back section of Spencer's, kids. That was me. That was me at like eight years old. I was like, I want this Sonic plushie I see in the window. And my dad was like, please do not look at the back of the store. And I was like, okay. Bad things are back there. Then here's the newest release of the GE Modern Sonic. I really like this guy. I think he's new. Then we have the GE Super Sonic. Here is the Jazzwares Classic Sonic. Here is the Tomy Classic Super Sonic. I like this more than the Jax one. The Jax ones are flat and weird. And then here's the Build-A-Bear Movie Sonic. Real neat. I think Metal Sonic constitutes his own character, so I'll do him later. Here is the first Tails I owned, who is the Jazzwares Tails. Very, very old and very, very uh, rough condition, to say the least. And we have the GE Modern Tails, the newest one that they came out with. And I'd say he looks pretty neat. And then here's the Tomy uh, Classic Tails. Cute little adorable guy. Here is the Tomy Modern Knuckles. Here is the Tomy Classic Knuckles, a vastly superior plush in my opinion. Here is the GE Modern Knuckles. I'm kidding. This is the GE Classic Knuckles that I gave purple eyes like Modern Knuckles, because not only did I get this before they made a Modern Knuckles, I also don't really like their Modern Knuckles. I think he looks really weird. And then here's the Build-A-Bear Sonic Movie uh, Knuckles plush. Really cool. Here is the GE Modern Amy. I've been trying to hunt down the Jax uh, Classic Amy for a reasonable price. Uh, that's actually the only Jax one that I think I prefer over any other iteration of the classic characters. Then we have the GE Metal Sonic. Modern Metal Sonic. Egg, they haven't made a classic, so this is just going to be the GE Modern G Metal Sonic. Cool play. Here's the Jazzwares Classic Metal Sonic. Pretty grail pick. One of the rarest Sonic plushies, I think, out there nowadays. Or at least the, the, the rarest modern Sonic plushies. You obviously have ones like the Sonic Adventure plushies, the Sané plushies, the, uh... I guess of an individual character outside of just a modern release, which is widely available like Jax. I don't know what I'm trying to say. He's hard to find, and I have him, and you don't. Unless you do. Anyway, here is a uh, funny Sonic that I customized to be Mecha Sonic from Sonic 3 Knuckles. Pretty neat. Here is a Toy Network Sonic X Dr. Eggman. Another one of my Grail plushies. So happy I have this guy. He scales perfectly with the GE plushies. Uh, he looks awesome and not like stupid like the GE Modern Eggman. I don't know why he looks so bad. Uh, and I really like this guy. Spin Dash Pro Reference. Here's the GE uh, Moji Dr. Eggman plush. Here's the Jazzwares Shadow the Hedgehog plush. My first shadow. Here is the GE Shadow the Hedgehog plush. Really cool, especially because he's the orange muzzle like how he was in Sonic Adventure 2. And then never again, they just had the same color as Sonic, but I like that they did this for him because he looked neat with the orange. I think so, anyway. And then here's the GE Super Shadow Plush. Quality control can suck my elbow because, God, this guy looks kind of bad, but whatever, I have him, I guess. Here is a Rouge the Bat custom that I attempted to make in the scale of the uh, Jazzwares plushies and the Tommy Knuckles. Uh, however, uh, yeah, it's just so much easier to collect the GE guys, so I just decided to bite the bullet and get a bunch of GE guys. Speaking of which, here's the Great Eastern Entertainment, GE whatever you call it, Rouge the Bat. I cut the wings off of where they were at so they could flap around and I could make them fly because they were attached to their arms and they looked silly. Granted, I'm not sure how much better than flopping around looks. 
All right, get ready for 90% of the rest of these to be GE plushies. Ironic how I say that in the next two of these aren't GE. Here's the Jack Specific Might of the Armadillo plush. Really cool they made him. And the Jack Specific Ray the Flying Squirrel. Also super cool, I love Ray. Yippee! Here is the Great Eastern Entertainment, Big the Cat plush, really cool guy, and a custom little froggy I made for him. So yeah, there they are. Here is the GE Gamma plush, 102E102 e Gamma from Sonic Adventure. Really surprised I made this guy before Omega, but I'm not complaining, I like Gamma. He's like one of the coolest individual Sonic solo stories. Neato. Here's the GE Cream the Rabbit. Really cute little plushie. Cream's adorable. Little six year old kid. She goes, Boo! Almost forgot about this guy chronologically. Here's the GE Chaos. Really cool. Here is the GE SBO the Chameleon. And then we have the GE Charmy the Bee. And the lastly, the GE Vector the Crocodile. Big boy, big boy, big boy, you got big boy, big headphones, big boy, big boy, big boy, yeah, yippee. What if I cry, anyways, to call? I forgot she's in Sonic Adventure and not, because they made her so recently. GE to call, she's really cool, I like that they made her. To call the echidna. Yeah. All right, it's Sonic Riders time, baby. Here is the GE Jet the Hawk. You can tell that this is the more recent re-release of Jet because he has the embroidered eyes instead of the iron on ones. But yeah, really happy to finally have Jet because he was pretty rare for a while. And we have the absolutely massive GE Wave the Swallow. I have no idea why she's so freakishly tall. But I think this was made because this one was supposed to be in scale with the 14-inch uh, modern Sonic the other time. I don't know why they did that because none of their other plushies scaled to that height. I guess this one did, but... Now she looks really freakishly tall next to everybody, which is stupid. And then we have the GE Storm the Albatross. The Storm Boss, we need to get the Sonic the Hedgehog and the treasure, whatever the heck we did in Sonic Riders. Next up is the Sonic 06 Trio. Here is the Great Eastern Silver the Hedgehog. Pretty old uh, plush that I have here. He is from quite a long, long time ago. I guess technically she started in Sonic Rush, but shut up, she was in 06 too. Here is the GE Blaze the Cat. Really cool plush. I like the fluffy parts on her arms and her legs. She's neat. You can ride around the Himalayas for miles! And here is the GE Mephilus the Dark. Heck yeah. Memphis, Tennessee, my favorite guy. Here is the Tomy Orbot plush from Sonic Boom, technically, but. It looks visually no different from the modern series Orbot, so I'm gonna call him that. And then here's a custom Cubot meant to replicate the style of the Orbot. Likewise, here's the Sticks the Badger from Tomy from Sonic Boom. Really cool. Doesn't scale with any of the GE plushies, but maybe one day they'll make a GE Sticks, but that'll also make the fact that I have this really rare plush worthless. I got her in Toys R Us one time. Here is the GE Infinite plush from Sonic Forces. Really cool. I like him a lot. Plush anyway, the character's fine. Here are the GE Tangle and Whisper from the IDW comics. Uh, some of my favorite characters. I really like the comic characters a lot. I hope they make Dr. Starline next because he's also really cool. And Surgeon Kid and Bell. because I like all of them a lot. Here's Tangle. She's very soft, and also she really is very disproportionate, and Whisper is also pretty disproportionate from the modern cast. Don't know why they did that. GE, please have consistent proportions. I beg of you. And here is the GE Whisper, as I stated previously. Wish you could take off her mask. Apparently you could do that for the bootleg, which is kind of stupid, but whatever. And lastly, here is a custom Agent Stone from the Sonic movies meant to scale with the Toy Network Eggman. I gave him bendable arms, bendable legs. He's just overall a really cool dude. He's gonna bring in his uh, steamed goat, Austrian goat milk latte. Uh, ah! Well darn, he died. Honestly, this collection isn't super huge. I just value it a lot because I really like the fact that I have a lot of the Sonic cast. Uh, but yeah, I really like these guys. Sonic the Hedgehog for the win. Woo! It's like my favorite video game series. I know, right? It's not FNAF. I like Sonic a lot. Don't make fun of me.
So here are all my FNAF plushies uh, in an order. There's so many that sorting through them might almost be impossible. Uh, and honestly, you guys have seen them in an order enough. So let's just wacky, let's wacky it up. Let's make some, let's make some magic. Start off, here's the Jumbo 16-inch Freddy Fazbear by Funko. Here is the questionably blue bootleg, questionably Sanchi Freddy Jumbo plush I found on eBay one day. And I just thought it was such an obscure bootleg that I was interested enough to buy it. Yeah. Here's the second generation Sanchi Fat Mojo collaboration Freddy Fazbear plush. Here is the Funko Freddy Fazbear plush. Here is the Good Stuff Freddy Fazbear plush. Here is the Hex Freddy Fazbear plush. Got like an armada, like the Legion of Doom here. Look at all those guys. Here is the Sanchi uh, Gen One Bonnie, because Bonnie was the first one they did that Fat Mojo Sanchi fusion with. So I think they only really made that kind of them. Outside of the purely Sanchi produced Bonnies that came out earlier, two-ish years ago. Here is the Funko Bonnie. Uh, I dropped him. No. And here is the Hex Bonnie. Tons of fake Mubu Gukutar. If you weren't aware of the hex plushies, they can do that. All their limbs. Here's the Gen 1 Sanchi Chica. Back to purely Sanchi again. And with the Carl the Cupcake, which is unmovable. I guess I'll do all the Carls in this section too. Which is one of them. I don't know why I pretended like there wasn't a there was another Carl plush that wasn't just the toy cupcake or the movie cupcake. Here is the Funko Chica plush. And the Hex Chica plush. I guess with a car on it. And a plate. A lot of removability with this one. Here is the Sanchi Gen 2 Foxy plush. Sanchi Fat Mojo collaboration. Collaboration. Whatever you may have it. And here is the Funko Foxy plush. And the Hex brand Foxy plush. Launch the hook. <laughs> Cracked your screen. That was just like an angry bird. Here's the Sanchi Golden Freddy plush. And then here's the Sanchi Fredbear plush. Ooh, I threw a curveball at you. This is technically a FNAF 4 character. Whoa, we're getting real crazy now with this FNAF plush collection. Here's a custom to scale Funko uh, Fredbear plush based off of his appearance from FNAF World. And then here is a Hex brand Fredbear plush with a little walkie-talkie from Sister Vocation. Here is the Funko Spring Bonnie plush, who is also a Hot Topic exclusive. Here is a second Funko Spring Bonnie plush. Here is a Withered Spring Bonnie plush, a custom. Here is the Funko Spring Trap plush. And a second Funko Spring Trap plush. That I'm going to use for custom at some point. What is it? I don't know. Here is a custom of a Sanchi scale Spring Bonnie plush based on his appearance from the Silver Eyes novel. And then here is a Hex Spring Bonnie plush. Her and her little cheese cutter. <laughs> Pizza cutter, that's what it was. And here's a custom Hex uh, suited Spring Bonnie, we'll say that, with a knife. Uh, you can see the purple guy in there. Purple guy! Wah. Here is the GameStop exclusive Toy Freddy plush from Funko. Here's the Hot Topic exclusive Toy Bonnie plush, also from Funko. Pretty much all these are from Funko. I'll clarify when it's not. Here is the Funko uh, Toy Chica plush. Dang it, I said Funko again. My brain wanted to say an exclusive, but then I realized it wasn't an exclusive, so I just tried to fill something in that blank and it just Funko came out. Here is the Cupcake plush from Funko. However, this is technically the toy cupcake, which is why it's in the FNAF 2 section. Here is the Funtime Foxy plush, as well as the Walmart exclusive Mangle plush. However, I'm a Nightmare Mangle truther. This will always be Nightmare Mangle in my head. As well as the U2's Mangle plush. Super cute. This is fan designed and it's really awesome. Heck yeah. As much as the quality kind of fumbled on that plush, but that's not the fault of the fan, that's because YouTube's cheaping the hell out and decided to print a lot of the body. Here's the Hot Topic exclusive Balloon Boy plush, as well as the second one. Matu. And here's a repaired uh, puppet plush. Tape, sticky, ruined the arms, had to fix them, kinda. 
They still look kind of bad. Almost forgot about this guy earlier when I was uh, doing the spring bonnies. Here's this random bootleg spring trap plushie uh, I got at a random store at a fair. Um, yeah, <laughs> this guy is scary looking. Bought it for the novelty and the memory. Next up is my custom uh, Withered Freddy plushie. Then we've got my custom Withered Bonnie plushie. And then we have my custom Withered Chica plushie. My custom Withered Foxy plushie. My custom Withered Golden Freddy plushie. I don't actually have a regular Funko Golden Freddy, this is the only one. We have a custom of Cake Bear from the FNAF 2 minigames. We have the Hot Topic exclusive Shadow Freddy plush. We have my first Shadow Bonnie custom. Flat ass motherf- We have my second much superior uh, custom Shadow Bonnie plush. It's even got a little cotton tail. We love him for that. Next up we have my custom Phantom Mangle plush. As well as a as the Hot Topic exclusive Phantom Balloon Boy plush. Will I end up getting those like bootleg Vinquetal uh, Phantom Chica and Phantom Freddy plushies? Mm hmm, maybe. I almost forgot about you. Go back there. Oh, he made it. <sighs> I forgot him again. This guy can't catch a break. The Target exclusive Phantom Foxy plush. Here is the Nightmare Freddy plush by Funko. Here is the Nightmare Bonnie plush by Funko. Where's his back? I have two. Here is the Nightmare Chica plush by me. I made this. It's a custom because Funko never made Nightmare Chica. Here is the Funko Nightmare Foxy plush. Here's my custom plush trap. Here's the GameStop exclusive uh, Nightmare Cupcake plush. Here is a custom Nightmare Fredbear plush. Here's also my first iteration of a Nightmare Fredbear plush. Not good. Here is the Vink Vitol Nightmare plush. Super cool looking. I like him a lot. Here is the Jacko Chica plush. Here is the Jacko Bonnie plush. Here are two really botched customs. Here's a Nightmare Balloon Boy. Not good. Maybe, maybe one day I can fix him. And here is a Nightmare Young. Also pretty bad looking, to be honest. Here's a plush of the crying child I'm gonna throw in for funsies. I definitely miss purple guy, but who cares? It's pretty cool with the, the new Nightmare that I basically have every FNAF 4 character now, uh, if we count Nightmare Mangle in my heart. Here is the Circus Baby plush. I can't find Ballora. I know I have one. PNG. I'll probably find her later. Purple guy. Here is the Funtime Foxy plush. Here is the Funtime Freddy plush. Here is the Ennard plush. As well as the Black Eye Ennard re-release. And as well as a custom unmasked Ennard that I made. Here are two Hot Topic exclusive Exotic Butters plushies, better known as Mr. Butters on this channel. Here's a plush of Michael Afton. He also has bendable arms. Here is the Walmart exclusive Bonnet plush. Here's the Target exclusive Lulbit plush. And the Best Buy exclusive Yendo plush. Just kidding, this is a custom. I had you tricked there for a minute. Told you I'd find her. Here's Ballora. Yay! Endo O2 jump scare! I have a mini Rena and some bonbons for your troubles. Can you tell I'm really tired of just talking about FNAF plushies? I thought, you know, it'd be fun to just talk about all my plushies again, but, you know, I enclosed the FNAF ones, and I've talked about these so many times. Too many times. Here's Rockstar Freddy by Funko. Here's Rockstar Foxy, also by Funko. Here is Pig Patch. Here is Orville, the elephant. Here is the Walmart exclusive Happy Frog. 
as well as the Walmart exclusive Mr. Hippo. And the custom Ned Bear that I made. Here's a number one crate. Whoa. Yeah. Here's the Helpy plush by Funko, as well as the Candy Cadet plush by Funko that is also a Hot Topic exclusive. Here's a trifecta of Funtime Chica, a custom I made. The L Chip plush by Funko. And my custom Music Man. As well as a custom Funtime Cupcake. And two Hot Topic exclusive security puppets, one of these being tagged. Here is two more Michael Afton interpretations, one being from Sister Location and one from FNAF 6. I forgot about the Sister Location one, sorry, good. Here's my first custom scrap baby. This is actually my first custom plush <gasps> ever that wasn't made out of paper. Yeah, she's neat. Here's my actually good scrap baby that I made more recently. Pretty cool. As well as my custom Molten Freddy. my custom scrap trap, and the Funko Lefty. Here is my custom glitch trap plush. Pretty neat. As well as the Dreadbear Funko plush. Here is the mini Dreadbear plush, which is a Walmart exclusive. You can tell because he's smaller than the first one. Here's the Captain Foxy Walmart exclusive plush. And the Grim Foxy plush by Funko. Here is the second appearance of a plush that I actually don't think I had in the last collection video. My very first Vanessa plush. Uh, this is based off of like almost nothing, very little we knew about her in the lore, as well as the mask. Uh, these two went together for the Sly Pie Monsters plush collab that uh, I participated in as well as, I guess, what is a more uh, help-wanted adjacent van the Vanny custom than uh, uh, Security Breach one, because this is based off of her brown spotted design in the vest, like Glitch Trap. She was decapitated. All <laughs> Surprise old Michael Afton jump scare, this plush sucks. <laughs> Here is the Beta Glamrock Freddy, which is based off of the very first, I think, calendar concept art of him. Pretty neat. Here is my modified Funko Glamrock Freddy. As well as a custom shattered Glamrock Freddy. Well, actually, this is more like the upgraded Glamrock Freddy. This is the shattered Glamrock Freddy. Not ruined Glamrock Freddy, though. That guy's missing the head. And that guy's still got his head, I think. As well as the Sanchi Glamrock Freddy plush. It's pretty awesome. Really happy Sanchi came back. Here is a Glamrock Chica plush by Funko, still tagged, and my modified one, which actually hasn't changed a whole lot, as well as the shattered Glamrock Chica custom plush that I made. The u standing Glamrock Chica plush. I really like the pink color that they used on this. And the Sanchi Glamrock Chica plush. Super awesome. Here is my modified Funko Glamrock Monty. <laughs> no, it's just Monty. Montgomery Gator plush. Here is my shattered Monty plush. My custom. And the Sanchi Monty plush. Super cool. Here is my modified Roxanne Wolf Funko plush. My shattered Roxanne Wolf plush. And the Sanchi Roxanne Wolf plush. If anyone's wondering why I never made the ruined characters, uh, just because they don't really fit in the story. And they don't really need to be there. <laughs> Here is the scratchy fabric official Vanny from Funko. Still tagged. As well as my much better modified Vanny plush. And the uh, V1 of that Vanny that also got decapitated. I just decapitate all my old Vannies at this point. If anyone's wondering uh, what happened to the V1s of all my other Glamrock plushies, uh, V1 Freddy was turned into Upgraded Freddy, V1 Chica was turned into Shattered Chica, V1 Monty has turned into Shattered Monty, and V1 Roxy has turned into Shattered Roxy. Here is the U2's Vanny plush. 
Here is my custom Gregory plush. As well as my custom Vanessa plush, the security guard. They're different than Ven, you see. Very similar to Vanessa and that bunny. That cannot be a coincidence. Here is my custom Sunrise plush. My custom Moondrop plush. The Funko Sun plush. The Funko Moon plush. And the U2's daycare attendant flip plush thing. Here is my giant DJ Music Man custom plush. As well as a staff bot plush. And my custom burn trap plush. Yeah. Hell yeah. Here are some plushies from FNAF Ruin. Here is Cassie. Here is my first Glamrock Bonnie plush. As well as a second, more accurate Glamrock Bonnie plush. Here is a custom plush of Eclipse. Uh, technically speaking, this is more like its own entity, like a third entity than, than like a combination of Sun and Moon, but it's the same concept. The official Funko Eclipse plush. I don't really know what you'd call this. It's, it's, it's kind of big though, it's like jumbo-ish. And a plush of Maskbot, also from Ruin. And we have- <laughs> Mimic! The Mimic! The Mimic! Yeah, the custom Mimic. The Mimic! Okay, yeah, we can stop. Guess I'll throw on a Help Wanted 2 guy. Here's Carney from Help Wanted 2. He's me. Here is the, uh, FNAF Help Wanted mobile port slash security breach Princess Quest monster thing. Glitch trap. Yeah. This thing. Handy unit. This little tiny Funko mystery mini keychain foxy plush thing. And my first Dread Bear. The very first. Here's Freddy Frost Bear from FNAF AR, a Walmart exclusive. My custom Black Ice Frost Bear. Two Frostbite BBs, who are Walmart exclusives, supposedly. I got them both on Funko's website. My custom Frost Plush Trap. Small little thing. And my custom Arctic Ballora. Here is my first custom Shamrock Freddy, as well as the actual Walmart exclusive Funko Shamrock Freddy, which looks really cute, actually. Here's the Walmart exclusive Chocolate Bonnie. Here is the uh, VR Toy Freddy, as well as the uh, High Wire, Live Wire? Live Wire Toy Freddy, which is a Walmart exclusive. Here's the System Error Toy Bonnie as well as the uh, high score Toy Chica. I dropped him. Here's Radioactive Foxy from Funko. And my custom Toxic Spring Trap. Firework Freddy, Mew! I actually don't know if I'm gonna find him. I, I looked pretty thoroughly. Here are two Liberty Chica plushies, one tagged, both Walmart exclusive. You get the gist. Here's a custom Flaming Spring Trap. Oh. Here is a custom Ringmaster Foxy. Here's a custom Magician Mangle. And a custom Clown Springtrap. Here's the Walmart exclusive Blackheart Bonnie. And a custom Heartsick Baby. Here is the Serpent Mangle Plush. And the Curse Plush. as well as the Funko Shop exclusive Candy Freddy plush, who is a totally real FNAF AR character. I found him! <laughs> All right, FNAF books. First up, we have the man himself, Twisted Freddy from Funko. Then we have Twisted Bonnie. We got Twisted Chica. Twisted Foxy. Twisted Wolf. Th 
Theodore and Stanley. No Ella though, because they hate women. Now we got some from Fazbear Frights. Here is Eleanor from uh, the aforementioned book. Too beautiful. Based on the fan design by the Oof Troop, but also takes a lot of major inspirations from her actual depiction of the book, despite just really long circus baby. Dang you, bad FNAF artists. Okay, here's Count the Ways Freddy. <laughs> Can you tell I'm tired? He's neat. Open stummy. Turny eyebrow. Yay. Here's the plush of Millie, the main protagonist from that book that I made for the music video. Here is the Stitch Wraith. His mask is a little uh, lopsided. Here is Fetch, along with Lonely Freddy, and Plush Trap Chaser. Here is Blackbird. Here's Hide and Seek Shadow Bonnie. And here is the two little Faz Goo guys from that video. The first version and the big guy with the heart. <laughs> and lastly from Fazbear Frights, we have my huge giant Afton amalgamation guy that's like three feet tall and way too big to fit on the screen. How am I gonna get him back there? Well, I did it, but I also forgot about Coils. Here's Coils. The circus clown. Oh yeah, one of the many sea bonnies are also here. Here are the three Bobby Dots from Tales of the Pizza Plex. Uh, Rose, Gemini, and Olive. From that video. And here is Tiger Rock. Here are a couple plushies based off characters from the FNAF movie. Here is Mike Schmidt, as portrayed by Josh Hutcherson. There's a piece of uh, felt on his head. Here is Abby Schmidt, as portrayed by Piper Rubio. Here is Steve Raglan, slash uh, William Afton, as portrayed by Matthew Lillard. And here is the Yellow Rabbit. Also, here's Daco. He was in the background of the FNAF movie. That, that, that makes this makeshift plush count. He doesn't sing anymore. Here's a bunch of stupid Funko Cs. Here's the Blacklight Cupcake. Here's Tie-Dye Freddy. Tie-Dye Bonnie. Tie-Dye Chica. Tie-Dye Foxy. Big tie-dye foxy. He's big now. Here is tie-dye funtime foxy. And tie-dye springtrap, a Walmart exclusive. I ran out of bedroom, so we are moving to the rest of the floor. Here's balloon Freddy. Balloon foxy. Balloon chica. Oh yeah, I guess this one's also Walmart exclusive. Clown Freddy. Clown Bonnie. Clown Foxy. And my custom circus Chica. Here is Santa Freddy. Here's Elf Bonnie. Here is Snow Chica. Here's Gingerbread Foxy. Oh, I dropped him. And here is Nutcracker Foxy, who is a Walmart exclusive. I guess this last section for FNAF stuff will be like the FNAF fan works. Uh, and why don't we start with a little shameless self-promotion. Here's my design of Prisoner Springtrap from my fanverse plotline in my videos. Yay. And then we have the Candy the Cat GameStop exclusive. Fazbear Fan First Plushy. I dropped him. By Funko. Here is the GameStop exclusive Pop Goes the Weasel plush. Based on him, designed from Pop Goes Evergreen. Here is a modified GameStop exclusive Blake the Badger plush. Trying to make him look more like his design from Pop Goes Evergreen, but this is his design from Pop Goes 2016 because Funko's stupid. 
Here's Cindy the cat from Five Nights at Candy's. Her eyelash is a little messy. There you go. Cutie little patootie. Here's Chester the chimp from Five Nights at Candy's. Here is the penguin from Five Nights at Candy's. And here is Blank from Five Nights at Candy's. Here is Sarah the squirrel from Pop Goes Evergreen. Here is Saffron the squirrel from Pop Goes Evergreen. And here is Stone the crow from Pop Goes Evergreen. Here is Menorah the mouse from Pop Goes Arcade, technically speaking, because I don't think she's in Evergreen, unfortunately. My favorite character. Here is Simon, as he's depicted in Pop Goes 2, The Dead Forest, that was canceled. But also, I guess, in Pop Goes 2016, and in Evergreen, but we don't know what it's designed yet, looks like yet in that game. Also a Candy's character I forgot, here's the Monster Rat from Five Nights at Candy's 3. Here is the Ignited Freddy plush from The Joy of Creation. Here is the Ignited Bonnie plush from the same game. Here is Ignited Chica. Here is Ignited Foxy. And here is Creation. He's pretty big. Yeah. Here is some characters from the uh, now lost media, <laughs> FNAF Plus. FNAF Plus Freddy. These guys are still going to be in the Fanverse series, by the way. Just letting you all know, just because the game's canceled doesn't mean they can't be in my videos. Here is the FNAF Plus Bonnie. Okay, there we go. I got him to spin. Here is the FNAF Plus Chica, as well as the Mr. Cupcake. As well as the FNAF Plus Foxy. Here is a bootleg Flumpty Bumpty plush from One Night at Flumpty's. <clears throat> Here's a couple other fan uh, FNAF characters. Here is the young girl spirit from Juniors. As well as Paul Bear from Juniors. Here is Sparky the dog. The old FNAF hoax. This is not the design from the movie, rather this is the design that uh, the fan came up with that had been kind of slowly iterated and added upon over the years. And here is Golden Toy Freddy, another hoax character. Here are two fan characters of my own. Here's Goldie, meant to be the dead phone guy, kind of inspired by uh, Golden Call from that one game that we don't mention. Yeah. And here is Mrs. Cheese Wheel, the wife of Mr. Butters, who appeared in that one video, so now I am inclined to show her. Here's a couple of Scott Cawthon's original characters, such as the Coffee Pot from The Desolate Hope and The Desolate Room. Chipper from Chipper and Sons. And Soul Dozer from The Pilgrim's Progress. I think I got that wrong in the last video. I think I thought he was from The Desolate Hope. He is from The Pilgrim's Progress, I believe, so. Yeah, I got my lore right this time. Here are three FNAF-inspired uh, characters. I'm not gonna dog on, uh, you know, Walton Files' uh, Mr. Bond, because he, he, we kind of knew that. He was already a FNAF-inspired analog horror thing. These two are blatant ripoffs, though. Oh, uh, yeah, Willie from Willie's Wonderland. And Flegel from the Banana Splits movie. Next up, we have the four Fazbear fanverse developers that are in my series. Here is Kane Carter. Uh, I know he has his new, like, OC that he uses on Twitter. Um, I'm just gonna keep using this, because, like, unless Kane personally comes to me and asks me to use his OC, which I doubt he really cares, it, it doesn't really matter. Maybe I'll have a subplot where he grows his hair out or something, I don't know. Here is Emil Mako. Here is Nixon. And here is Fiznam himself. <laughs> and last but not least for the FNAF category, we have Mr. Scott Coffin himself. Here. There we go. 
So unfortunately, even if I wanted to continue tonight, I'm out of room. I'm quite literally backed up to the door. So that's going to be it for this segment. Obviously, in a second, you're going to see another segment where I, I show more plushies, but this is all for this segment. We have Angry Birds, Mario, Pokemon, Sonic, and Five Nights at Freddy's. Sprinkle down here a little bit, too. Sorry, Sonic, you kind of got invaded upon. I love you. We'll be continuing the video on uh, this lovely bed here. That is iconic from my videos. We're going into the miscellaneous sort of section, but first we're going to kind of start with like the Nintendo adjacent franchises. Uh, first up with one you all know and love dearly. First up is the World of Nintendo Pikmin. Or the Red Pikmin, I don't know why I said Pikmin like this was the standard. This is the Red Pikmin with the leaf. I know that they make Pikmin plush variants where they have the leaf, the bulb, and the flower, but this is obviously just the one they made with the leaf. Smudge on his eye. Here's the World Nintendo Blue Pikmin with the bulb, Helicopter, Helicopter, Helicopter. Here is the Pikmin 2, uh, line, uh, yellow Pikmin. I don't, this might be bootleg, I'm not sure, I don't think it is, but in the essence it is, uh, oops. Here is the World of Nintendo White Pikmin with a flower, pink flower. Here is the newest Sané Pikmin. I don't know if this is an all-star collection, but it's just a Pikmin, uh, purple Pikmin. Really cool to finally have a purple Pikmin in my collection. Cause they're uh, pretty hard to find. They're only in the Pikmin 2 set besides this. Here is the World of Nintendo winged Pikmin. Pretty cute, pretty cute. I like how it's in kind of the flying position. I thought that was neat, little leaf. Here is the Pikmin uh, Sané Rock Pikmin plush. Got beans in his butt. Chunky little guy. Here is a custom Ice Pikmin that I used in the Lemonade Stand episode. I don't know if this is a thing on Ice Pikmin, but I tried bending the thing because it's, like it's like a shard, like an icicle. Uh, yellow leaf. Cute. And here is a custom Glow Pikmin. Pretty cute. We have the Pikmin Sané Olimar. Before uh, this line of plushies came out, the only other Olimar they had, and I also Louie, was the Pikmin 2 set, which goes for so much money because they deteriorate so easily, and I think they didn't make them nearly as much as the other Pikmin. Here is the Louie from that same set. I hope we get the, uh, the Pikmin 3 and 4 captains, because that would be really cool. I don't know what her name is because I haven't played the game yet, but I would kill for the little, the little gal from Pikmin 4. I think she's really cute. Here is a bootleg, maybe, uh, <laughs> uh, Pikmin 2 Bulborn plush. Might not be bootleg, but it's definitely kind of in worse condition. It's really cool because you can shove the Pikmin in its mouth. It's got a little, little hole in there, so you can shove them in there. Yeah. I would also really love some more Pikmin enemy plushes. We literally only have one. Next up is a pretty uh, big other collection from mine. We have the Kirby plushes. Here is the Santa All-Star Collection Kirby. Probably my favorite Kirby plush. He stands, he's got beans in his feet, and he's got a lot of, a nice, a really nice color palette, I think. He's very cute. From that same line, here is another All-Star Collection Yo-Yo Kirby. Uh, I bought this specifically because I was like, ooh, I can use this for a video. It's like him using Ness's power, but yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. It's the only copy ability Kirby I have. This is an older Sané Meta Knight plush. Really like this guy. He, I think he's actually pretty hard to find nowadays, but back when I got him, he wasn't super obscure. Uh, I cut the sword out so you can take it in and out of his hand. Galaxia. Yeah, he's really cool. I like him. Fight me. I would kill for a, a Meta Knight with these proportions and also with like little wings that would, you could like fold out or something. That'd be super cool. Here is the Sané, Great Wise King DDD. I, this might be a part of the All-Star Collection, I'm not sure. Or maybe it's just a standard release, but yeah. Grail Pick would definitely be the uh, Kirby right back at ya sort of style DDD that came alongside the set of the Meta Knight, but that one is really, really rare, so probably not ever gonna see that one in my collection, unfortunately, but this guy's still really cool. Here is the Marks by Sané. Really cute guy. Got the cool separated jester hat, you got the beans in his feet, very soft, very squishy, very cute. From that same line, here is Magalore. Cover up his face. Next we have Taranza from Kirby's Triple Tro 
Triple, triple Deluxe? Triple Deluxe. I think that's what it was. <laughs> I'm not great at remembering Kirby names. I didn't really play a lot of the 3DS ones. But yeah, Kirby Triple Deluxe. This guy. And lastly, we have Susie from uh, Kirby Planet Robobot. I customized this one. Uh, I, did, I, I didn't really like how her hands were kind of like folded over each other and stuck on the chest. So I ran a little green wire through her and put the hands on the ends. So you can actually pose her hands and they can actually float like how they do in the game rather than them just like sitting on the front of her chest for some reason. It just, it just looks so much better in my opinion. <laughs> it actually looks like Susie rather than just being like, uh, my hands are stuck to my chest constantly. <laughs> Here's a plush of Chef Kawasaki. Normal Kirby enemy, but a major character in the anime. It's really cool, because he's got a fun design. Here's a plush of Krako from the All-Star Collection. He's pretty neat looking, honestly. Just like the game, he's a boss, he goes... Here's a plush of Rick the Hamster from Kirby's Dream Land 3. As well as Kind the Fish same game. And Koo the Owl. Also from Kirby's Dream Land 3. You guys are all very soft. Very cute. Here is a plush of the Gordos. Yeah, these probably are most notable to you for being the little enemy guys that King DVD throws in Smash Bros. And they bounce around and they do spike balls and stuff. And it's cool. Here's a plush of the Scarfies. This is them in their cute form, and they start attacking you, they get one eye, and they go Alright, now we're on to the main men themselves. Here is my first Waddle Dee plush that I got a long time ago. This is from the uh, first Sane set, along with the Meta Knight and the aforementioned King Diddy. Not the one that I have, but the one that looks like her right back at you. I think the DS games also use that art style, but uh, here is the second one that I have at. This is a newer one I got, it's tagged. And you can tell it's newer because of how much shinier the fabric is and poppier it is. But yeah. Here's an all-star collection Waddle Dee sporting a much uh, more orange color, much more rounded boots with beans in them rather than cardboard. Here's a Waddle Dee in a builder hat. It's a little smaller. I don't know if there's any particular line, but yeah. There he is. Got a little keychain on his head. As well as a tiny little steampunk uh, Waddle Dee. Little adorable guy. He's got his green hat, his backpack. He's very cute. And uh, again, I don't know what specific set this is from. This is from Kirby's Dreamy Gear. That is the set that this is from. We figured it out, guys. Here's the All Star Collection Waddle Dee. And lastly, we have, uh, I don't know what set this is from again. I think this is just from like an old 2000 set. This is a keychain plush of a the Sergeant Waddle Doo. Uh, this most commonly appeared in the Kirby anime as the sort of leader of all the Waddle Dees. Uh, normal Waddle Doo wasn't even in the show. It was just this guy that sort of led all the Waddle Dees. And he talked like this in the English dub, and he's like, hey, Waddle Dees, you gotta go over there and do stuff for the king. But yeah, uh, really neat that there's a plush of him. There is all the Kirby boys and the girls. I think there's one girl. Unless we're counting the the, the, the enemies as like androgynous, I guess. Like they're, they, they could be whatever. So this next section is gonna kind of just be like the Nintendo slash Super Smash Bros section because a lot of these characters are from Smash Bros but aren't from Nintendo also. So yeah, we'll just kind of go through them. First up, our handful of guys from The Legend of Zelda. Here is the Link plush from Breath of the Wild. Really cool guy. I cut his sword off so he could actually hold it. Uh, but this normally, I think, sticks like on the shield, but I made it so he can hold it. And there's a couple nifty little things that you can just like slide it into. So Nintendo, you might as well just cut it off to begin with. But then again, I guess people would probably have stolen it if you did that. Here's an older Toon Link plush, I believe from sometime in the 2000s. Not exactly sure what set this is from. This is like my first Link plush I ever got was this one. Pretty neat. Got a little teeny sword. You can tell how old this is because of how much yellowing's on the sword. Good god. Here is a custom plush of a bootleg Zelda from, I think, Ocarina of Time, but I attempted to make it look more like her appearance in Smash Bros., uh, which I believe is based off of A Link Between Worlds. 
if I'm not mistaken, slash, like, A Link to the Past, like, that kind of, that kind of subset of games, but, yeah, not terrible. She's cute. Here is a Toon Zelda plush. Obviously, this one's from, like, Wind Waker, Spirit Tracks, uh, Phantom Hourglass, maybe. I'm not a huge Zelda nerd, but I know a little bit of stuff. I know the little bird hat. It, the, the, they use the tune designs of the game with a little bird hat. Here's the World of Nintendo Tingle plush. Yeah. Here is my first Ganondorf custom. This one's a lot smaller than my second one that I'm about to show. Not a terrible product of the times, I guess. And here is my second Ganondorf custom with the sword. This is based off of his appearance from Ocarina of Time, and the one that he uses in Smash Bros. Big shocker. Pretty neat. His hands are bendable. His feet also are bendable, but it's more for stability than actual features sake. Hey, it's pretty neat. I like- I'm very proud of the hands on this one. I think the fists look really good. Next up are a couple characters from Star Fox. Here is the World Nintendo Fox McCloud plush. Here's the World of Nintendo Falco Lombardi plush. I'm managing to crawl to the corners of my brain to remember these guys' names off the top of my head. I guess it's not off the top of my head, I guess it's off the corner of my head. Here's my first custom wolf plush that I made. Uh, way too tall, kinda not great. You can kinda tell I attempted to do the style of World of Nintendo, it just didn't really, didn't really work out. And then here is a second custom wolf plush that I bought from, I believe this was something Sonic related on Twitter. Uh, I think I got it for like 35 bucks. Not too bad. Pretty cute. I shouldn't say this is someone else's work, but yeah, honestly, no, it, it works really well alongside Fox, so that's what's important. Here is my first custom of Samus Aran from Metroid. Heavily based off of their, like, first appearance. She's stancing. Here's my second, much better Samus custom. And if you can tell by the helmet. It's not a super great face, but this is the same as his face underneath. Zero suit. Uh, I think when I was going to do the Smash Bros. series, I was not planning on putting Sam Zero Suit Samus in it, so I just made a form of her with her mask off. And here is a huge custom of Ridley from Metroid. Bendable arms, bendable legs, bendable tail, bendable wings. Pretty cool guy. And then, yeah. I like him a lot. Here's a plush of Ness from Earthbound. Definitely an older custom, could be a lot better, but eh. Likewise, here's a plush of Captain Falcon from F-Zero. Pretty cool. Golden nipples! Insert the Markiplier from Random Encounters Musical. Oh, I'm Captain Falcon. Here are five of the first released All-Star Fire Emblem plushies by Sane. Here's Marth. Like it or not, Fire Emblem was a part of this series, and I actually like these plushies a lot. They're very well detailed. Here is Lucina. Her hair gets bunched up really easy, but, uh, it's still really neat. I like the little detail in her eye. Here is our boy Roy. I think that was the thing people said for him back then. <laughs> I don't know, I'm not as much of a Smash Bros. fan as I used to be. Here is Ike. He fights for his friends. And he's awesome. And here is actually one of my favorite characters to play in Smash Bros, but also just my favorite Fire Emblem character in general, Corrin. Which, people give Corrin a lot of crap. Like, that's where people kind of drew the line for Fire Emblem when it comes to comes to Corrin. And then people give Byleth some slack, which is weird. But I always liked Corrin. I thought the dragon stuff was really neat. And I think she's just very fun to play as. So this is probably the best hair for an, a plush ever. Like, it's soft, it's flowy, it keeps its shape. Like, how did they, they, they like, Lucina's, like, kind of meh, but then this is, like, man, this is cool. <laughs> man, guys, they even look like clones of each other over there. Ah. Here's a plush of the Inkling Girl from Splatoon. Uh, this originally had, again, the blaster sort of stitched to her chest, but I cut it off, drew a little design on her shirt, and now she can actually hold her blaster. 
shoot it at people. So, yeah. Here's a plush of Isabel from Animal Crossing New Leaf. I believe done by Sané. The little bells are adorable. Here's this plush of a, like, dog that I just use as Duck on Dog because it's virtually identical. It's just very long. Next up, we move on to Mega Man. Speaking of which, here's the GE Mega Man. I remember buying this back in the day and remembering, oh, yeah, he's doing the cool pose in Smash 4 trailer where he goes like, Mega Man, or whatever it says, and he, he looks like this to the side with his blaster. So yeah, I remember buying it for that. <laughs> Here's Proto Man by GE from that same set. This one's definitely, oddly enough, more weather than Mega Man, despite the fact that I definitely got him second. Here is the Rockman Dr. Wily plush. Got a lot of yellowing on the jacket. This is aged quite a bit, but I got him for a pretty good deal, so. Yeah. Nice to ring. And then, lastly, we have the Pac-Man Arcade plush, looking like this appearance from Pac-Man World and from Smash Bros. I don't know why I said lastly, there's still way more in this category, but I think I was just saying that because, you know, it was like the Mario and Sonic and Mega Man and Pac-Man. That was a big thing. I don't really know why those four went together. They, they didn't. Pac-Man's not a platformer character, typically. Here is the Fan Gamer Snake plush. Snake from Metal Gear Solid. He's got bendable limbs. Really neat. You can take the bandana off if you want to. Really cool looking. And this plush was forced to come in a pair, but uh, I do like this guy a lot. This is Otacon from the same series, same set from Fangamer. Also has a bunch of bendable limbs and the glasses can be removed. Really neat. They also came with like a little grenade and a ketchup bottle and then obviously the box, but uh, I don't have those with me right now. Here is a plush of Master Hand that I made, custom. Not great, to be honest, but eh, it does the job, I guess. Here's a plush of Ryu from Street Fighter by GE. And it's from a, the same promoter. I don't know if it's from the same set, but uh, this is also from GE. This is Ken. Here's a plush of Joker from Persona 5. I believe this is also by GE. Short little guy, pretty cool looking. This guy's not technically in Smash Bros, so I'm gonna throw him in here. Ah, here is a Toy Network, I believe, uh, Crash Bandicoot plush. I don't know, correct me if I'm wrong, I guess, but yeah, Crash Bandicoot. I was really hoping this guy's gonna be the last character and they picked Sora. I'm, a, I'm not salty, because Sora's a pretty cool pick, but they didn't put any of the Disney stuff in it. So like, what's even the point, man? Mickey Mouse and Mar- I guess now they can put Mickey Mouse in Smash Bros because he's public domain, kinda, I don't know. The iteration that's in Kingdom Hearts definitely ain't. Speaking of Kingdom Hearts, here is a Cloud Strife keychain from Final Fantasy VII. I actually don't know who made this. I believe it came with the touch tag cut off. From the same set, here is a Sephiroth keychain plush. Oh wait, touch tag's still on this one. Square Enix. I guess this is just made by Square Enix. Here is a much, much cooler, uh, posable figure plush of Sephiroth. You can Velcro off the, uh, the uh, sword. He has full body articulation in his legs and his arms. Even the neck can bend up and down. He's really neat. I was gonna get the cloud and I never got the cloud because I think it was out of stock when I bought this one. Uh, but that series kind of ended up falling through a little bit, so <laughs> no cloud for me. Still got this teeny guy though, so that counts. Don't talk to me or my son ever again. Here's a handful of plushies from Rare slash uh, Banjo-Kazooie, starting with the fan gamer Banjo-Kazooie. I'm so happy we got another Banjo plush. That really, really old 90s one is so hard to track down. And then fan gamer made a widely available Banjo plush again, which is just so neat. He's awesome. His bat back can open, it's got Velcro. It's got the Rare wear symbol on it. Perfect little guy from the N64 days. Yeah, I like Banjo. I played it, I played, I, I uh, played it done the I emulated it, but yeah, it was fun when I played it. And we have the Kazooie from that same plush set. Bendy wings, bendy feet. Yeah, Kazooie, my favorite little gal. Here is the fan gamer Grunt Hilda plush. Got bendy wire in the hat so you can keep its shape. The eyeball is Velcro. Man, 
that's about it but it's still a really neat plush very happy they made gruntilda i never got the mumbo unfortunately but we got gruntilda at least I don't think Fangamer made a grunt, uh, a mumbo, I just know that the, the old mumbo exists. Moving on, here is the green Jinjo from Fangamer. The purple Jinjo. The orange Jinjo. The yellow Jinjo. The blue Jinjo. And lastly, the Jinjo Nader. Pretty cool. I think his eyes are supposed to light up. I don't remember how to get it to do it. Either it doesn't work or the battery died, but whatever. <laughs> cool metallic fabric, his eyes are supposed to light up. And lastly for this section here is the Conker's Bad Fur Day Fan Gamer plush of Conker. Comes with a little crown. I don't know where it's at. He uses it as a prop a lot, but yeah. You can unzip the jacket. He's cool. I guess I missed this with Pac-Man. Here's a uh, Namco Arcade Miss Pac-Man plush. I'd argue this is a pretty good segue into Minecraft. Here is the Jazzware Steve from Minecraft, because he is in Smash Bros. Here is the Sheep from Minecraft. I believe most of these are by Jazzwares. Here is the Cow. See the Mojang tag. Jazzwares, I knew it. I knew it, I'm so smart. Dang, these guys are from 2014. Here's the Mooshroom from that same set. Actually, this one's from 2013. Dang, this dude's a decade old. Here is the Ocelot. I believe these last four plushies have been the baby variants of these characters because they made like bigger versions that were the adult cows and stuff like that, but I don't really care. They're just cute. Here is the squid and eat my chode jazz wares because guess what? There are no baby squids in Minecraft. There's just only the adult squids. He's got his little mouth down there that's embroidered. It's really neat, but yeah, it's a good plush. Okay, it appears that uh, the different devices are picked up Minecraft plushies later, so I will just finish the jazz wares ones off. Here's the zombie. It's really cool because this is the exact same scale as Steve. Here is the creeper. And here is the enderman. I can end a man. I don't remember the, the rest of the lyrics. Here's a giant zombie pigman plush. Or the deluxe plush, they probably called it back then. They, this this isn't even real anymore because they, they have piglins now. This is like an outdated design. They don't, this isn't even in Minecraft anymore. And here is the big iron golem plush. Huge guy. If you remember back in season one of FNAF plush, this is again a product of me buying a cool thing and being like, oh my, or getting a cool thing, whatever, and being like, oh my god, this is so cool, I have to put this into a movie, even if it makes no sense for a Minecraft character to be in a FNAF plush series, but shut up, it's just a cool thing. It was the big, cool, scary monster MacGuffin thing. Here is the Jinx, uh, Ender Dragon plush. I like the metallic fabric on this guy, the accents, but really cute. Minecraft Ender Dragon. Here is the Jinx Sea Turtle plush. Very rectangular. And here is the Jinx Minecraft Fox plush. Actually, this isn't from Jinx, this is from Mattel. Mattel made this one. I think the Minecraft license is just everywhere. This is one of those big pillow plushy thingies of the Glow Squid. I believe the little accents glow in the dark. I don't feel like showing it to you, but take my word for it. Man, I'm really good at uh, forgetting things and then remembering them right before it's crucial. Here is the bat plush by Jazzwares. <laughs> this guy is also an outdated design because they just updated in the last update the, the new bat. Now this guy isn't even in the game anymore. So, product to its time. A couple oddballs. Here is the Yokai Wash Whisper plush. I think I definitely bought this because of the Mario Muffet Adventures plush series. I thought it was neat. Again, before they did FNAF. There was a time before they did FNAF. This is the, uh, I think, SSOH Fortnite Llama plush. The Loot Llama. <laughs> Here is a Super Danganronpa 2 Monokuma plush. Guys, I did have a Danganronpa phase. You don't have to make fun of me. Likewise, here is another uh, plush of that same line, Monami. She's a bit smaller. Same. At least I picked two plushies from the best game in that series. Here's the Fan Gamer Shovel Knight plush. Really neat. Yacht Club Games made this game. 
His shovel has a magnet, and it can be placed on either hand. Pretty neat. And here is the fan gamer Shantae Plush. Also really cool. It's really weird that she's kind of an indie game, yet also her first game was on the Game Boy Color somehow. Uh, she survived very long. Uh, her hair is a bit misshapen, but it is supposed to be bendable. You're supposed to be able to bend it into whatever shape you want. I think it mine's a little messy right now, but yeah. Very cute plush. All right, now we're taking a bit of a detour here. We are doing Plants vs. Zombies next. Kind of going full circle-ish with the mobile games, but uh, it's, this is started as a PC game, so it doesn't count. I guess Angry Birds did too, never mind. Well, here is the Jazzwares Sunflower plush. I absolutely love this little gal. She is so cute. I think this is my favorite PVZ plush of all time, mostly because I love Sunflower a lot, but also because, I don't know, it's just, it's so adorable. They really did a good job on this one. Here's the Link Scene uh, Pea Shooter plush. What I want to know is, how did everybody get- Maybe I just bought PZ plushies too late into the game, but how did everybody get one that would stand up on its head? Because mine doesn't at all. If there was any sort of, uh, bend, like, piece that made it so the head stood up, it is not in mine. This dude is floppy as hell. Here's the Link Scene Cherry Bomb. I believe, maybe a bootleg of that plush, I'm not sure, but this is what mine looks like. Here's the Link Scene Walnut. Pretty much all these are. I'll clarify when they're not Link Scene. Look how cute he is. Here is the Ice P. This one might actually be a bootleg of the Link Scene one, because look at how different the face is compared to the Pea Shooter. Here is the Jazzwares Pea Shooter, but customized to be a repeater. The little pea comes out of the mouth, is on a string. Doesn't seem to work very well, but yeah, it's supposed to like shoot out, I guess. I don't really know what the, the gimmick for this mechanic was supposed to be outside of just having a pee. Maybe they wanted people to swing it around. Here's the Link Scene Chomper. Man, 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 man. Pretty neat. I cut the strings on this guy, so he uh, does not have his mouth closed like this. It's very open. Here is the Link Scene Sun Shroom plush. I love this one. I know a lot of modern iterations of this plush are really, really deformed, so I'm happy I managed to get one while it wasn't, because this is a very cute little guy. Here is the Fume Shroom in the same set. And lastly, the Doom Shroom. Again, very happy I got this before they kind of ended up very deformed, because this guy actually retains a mushroom shape. There's that one guy that made like the, the cursed PVZ products video, and the Doom Shroom is uh, not holding up very well in that one. Here is the Star Fruit plush. Pretty cool. Here is the, I'm pretty sure, bootlegged bootleg plush of the Three Peter. I don't think Linksine made this one, but technically speaking, Linksine is bootleg also, but also they might be the distributor for China because PVZ is very popular in China. I don't know. Here is the cactus that I fixated with eyelashes because I like the idea of the cactus being a girl. I like how I made that whole point earlier about how the Stella plush looked uh, objectified, and then I just proceeded to put eyelashes on the cactus. Here is the cabbage pult plush. I know they have the more modern one with like the sort of more greener leaf, like a light, like a light green leaves, and more normally shaped. But I don't know. I like how scrunkly this guy is. Look at him. Next up are these zombies. First up, we have the normal zombie, normal ass guy. Pretty neat. Then we have Conehead, using the Jack in the Box zombie face. Really cool. Here is the Jazzwares. PBZ zombie plush that I customized to be a bucket head. Found this little like pot thing, uh, drew some red on it, added a little wire, and yeah, now we have a bucket head. He's very top heavy, unfortunately, but he still looks cool. Because the only other bucket head plush that exists is the mummy one from PBZ2, and I didn't want that one because that doesn't make any sense. Here's the pole vaulting zombie. Very recent, but also pretty cool in terms of like detail, like. I'm really happy they went back and made PVZ-1 zombies, because they're iconic, I think. Speaking of not PVZ-1 zombies, here is the Big Wave Beach Flag zombie. Uh, this is from PVZ-2. Never made a PVZ-1 flag zombie. Unless there is one out there, I, I don't know, there wasn't one I got this guy. Here is the old newspaper zombie. Read this newspaper, you break it, he goes, and then he goes, 
Here is the disco zombie, or more likely, lightly, the, uh, sort of, what do you call it, like, the guitar zombie, I think, but it, I cut the guitar off, and now there's a big hole in his chest, but I think it worked because he's a zombie, um, yeah, I really wish I would have got the, uh, the Jazzwares disco zombie, because he looks cool, but I never got him. Here's the more modern Gargantuar plush, uh, this one being really cool, here's the amp that normally goes in the backpack, I can put him in there right now. There's the imp, uh, but his head comes off with a magnet, really neat. The arm comes off with a magnet, also really neat. And you can also take out the light post from his hand. So, yeah, a lot of interactability with this one. Really cool. Light post, it's a telephone pole, I'm stupid. Lastly, here is a custom Dr. Edgar George Zomboss plush. This uses the sort of punk uh, Zomboss as the base. And then I cut off the mohawk, added the brain, cut off his coat, put a white lab coat on, gave him some black pants, and obviously the boots just worked. The boots were already on it, and the boots worked. But yeah, I actually really think this guy looks phenomenal. Like, I think this is pretty close to how Link Scene would make, like, a normal Zomboss plush. Really cool. I guess I'll throw this in here, because I kind of forgot to put it with the Smash Bros stuff, but also it's not really a plush, but it kind of is. Uh, this is the Rob the Robot from the NES, you know, the, the toy. Uh... Really cool that I got this guy, to be honest. Uh, I think I bought him for the Smash Bros. series. It never came to be, but you never know. Maybe one day, because now I have him, so I don't have to buy him again. That would suck. Well, I believe that's where we're going to end that segment for the video. Don't worry, there's still more. God, there's still more. But, uh, yeah, this is sort of the PBZ, Minecraft, Nintendo, etc. section. But, yeah... Quite a lot of guys here, quite a lot of guys. Alright, uh, next segment. Alright, so this is kind of like the indies stuff, I guess? We'll, we'll go with that. Here is the Bendy plush by Fat Mojo and uh, Joey Drew Studios. He squeaks. Here's Boris, also the squeaking one. Cute. Here's Alice Angel. Here is the Barley plush. And the Edgar plush. I actually don't know where Charlie is, but I'm sure he's somewhere. Here is the Sammy Lawrence plush by Fat Mojo. You can take the mask off. Whoa, he's got scary eyes underneath. Here is a custom Dead Boris plush. Uh, very messy, but it's neat. Here is Susie Campbell, or sort of like the Twisted Alice Angel from Benji Chapter 3. Here is Brute Boris from Bendy Chapter 4. And the Ink Machine, I guess. Just, you, you know what I'm talking about. And here is Bendy and the Ink Machine's Ink Demon. A custom as well. You can see the eyes that I did, because people like to put eyes underneath the ink. But I never use them, I don't think, in any video. Here is the Bendy plush from Bendy and the Dark Revival. I really like the way he looks. His vest is very snazzy. He's got his bow tie. Cute. Here is the plush of Audrey from Bending the Dark Revival. Here's a custom plush of Wilson from Bending the Dark Revival. And here is a custom plush of Bendy and the Dark Revival's Ink Demon. He has posable limbs, posable head, Really cool. I like this guy a lot. I'm very proud of this custom. Let me see if I can make his legs look normal. Yeah, kinda. There you go. Oh yeah, also this is just a Funko Pop of the Searcher, but I just kinda use it as a plush because they never made one. Actually, I think they did. There's like a little tiny keychain one, but I, I never bought it because it's like a mystery thing and those are stupid. Next up is Cuphead. Peter, don't. That's Cuphead. Here. Dropped him. Here is the Cuphead plush by Funko. Here is the Mugman plush by Funko. And here is the Devil plush by Funko. Here is the Funko King Dice plush. Really cool looking. 
The Funko Puphead plush is a little puppet from the Jimmy the Great level. This is their variant syndrome, where they just make variants of random characters because they think they can just do it like how they do with Five Nights at Freddy's. Keeping the Cuphead train going, I believe this is a GameStop exclusive uh, black and white Cuphead. Yeah. Here is the Captain Briny Beard plush. The Rumor Honey Bottoms plush. And the Calamaria plush. Honestly, wish Funko would do more Cuphead plushies, because, uh, they're really neat, honestly. Oh, I guess one more. Here we go. The GameStop exclusive Legendary Chalice plush. Can I forget you, gal? I like the metallic fabric on this one. She looks neat. Here is the last official Cuphead plush. I believe this one is official. This is by Toy NK. Uh, I mean, it's got the branding, the copyrights on it, it's all an original tag. Most bootlegs don't have that, so I think this is official. Uh, however, they also made a Cuphead, Mugman, uh, Miss Chalice, and a uh, Chef Salt Baker, but they also made Grim Matchstick. So that's really neat. But yeah, I think this is official. Here we have a couple of- oh wait, I almost forgot! To be honest with you guys, I saw the Cagney Carnation plush when I was setting up, but now I can't find him. <laughs> Funko Cagney, he's somewhere around here. Here is a bootleg of the Jimmy the Great. A bootleg of Pork. Pat, no. Wart? Oh. I don't remember. I'm sorry, guys. Here's the plush of Bebby the Clown. Pork Rind, it was Pork Rind, I remember now. It's Pork Rind, it's a guy's name, Pork Rind. Here is a plush of Chef Salt Baker. Now I move on to the customs I have left. Here is a custom plush of Miss Chalice. Really like this plush, she's very cute. Here is a custom plush of Hildeberg. Uh, fun fact, a lot of these customs actually sort, especially the older ones, sort from uh, an ep a video me and Froki, Finance of Froki's, the older plush trooper we were gonna do. Um, call, it was gonna be a collab video on the Cuphead musical. Uh, you can probably still see some of the ones he made from for his video, like back in his place. He has like the Dr. Cal's robot was for that video. Uh, there's other ones I think that he has lying around, but yeah, um, that was for this video that we never made. Here is Chauncey, I think. Wait, maybe? I don't know. He's a carrot. It's the carrot. The cuphead carrot. The carrot. Now I'm second guessing myself and thinking Chauncey's the onion. Here's my custom flush of Elder Kettle. Here's the custom of Wally Warble's little baby bird guy. I think Froki was supposed to make the big Wally Warbles. Here is a plush of Baroness Von Bon Bon. Super tall. Also with a bendable, like, spine. Really neat. And lastly for the Cuphead plushies, here is a custom of Werner Worman. I even made the can for it. But yeah, he's really cool. There are the Cuphead guys over there. Woo! Here's a couple oddballs. Here is a plush of Hello Neighbor. Ooh, Hello Neighbor! This was made by Zack Toys. So there's some lore for you. And here is a plush of Huggy Wuggy. Custom made for Pop from Poppy Playtime. Bendable with limbs, and his uh, mouth can close and open, kinda. That was the thing I was trying to do here. It kinda worked. Here's a plush of Monica from Doki Doki Literature Club. This is made by Fat Mojo. Really cute little plushie. I like her. All right, welcome to this section where I call it the plushies I bought for one video. Here are a set of six Among Us plushies with these little top hats. They also have squeakers and their keychains. You can tell they just tried throwing every gimmick on these things. Uh, this was for a sequel to the Among Us video that my friend was supposed to write and just kind of got forgotten about. <laughs> Here is a blue one. Here is a yellow one. Here is a purple one. Here is a black one. And here is a white one. Here are the plushies I made slash uh, bought for the SCP video. Here is SCP-173. SCP-107. SCP-096. SCP-099, which I actually think went unused. I don't remember this one being in the actual video. 
And then this is a plush of uh, SCP-682, I believe. I made this one. Uh, this is based off of, this is just a random dinosaur plush that I found and made into this character. He was crucial to one of the endings, that's why I made him. Here are some bootleg plushies from Garden of Ban Ban. Here is Opila Bird. Here's a plush of Jumbo. Jumbo Josh. Here's a plush of Ban Ban himself. Here is a plush of Ban Bolina. Here's a plush of Stingo Flynn. And a plush of Captain Fiddles, which I'm very happy I gave him some spotlight in my video because good lord knowing the developers don't give a crap about one of their core six characters. Like, they, I think he's in like maybe two scenes. I don't know why I act like I care about the integrity of Garden of Bam Bam. Here are some plushies for a currently unreleased video of a parody of the amazing Digital Circus. Here's Pomni. This is based off of the official blush, but this is a bootleg because I think I bought this because I, the official one wasn't like out yet fully, so I wanted to make sure I had it in time for the video. <laughs> Here's a bootleg plush of Jax. The tall guy. Here's a bootleg plush of Ragatha. Here's a bootleg plush of Kinger. Here's a bootleg plush of Gangle. This is a pretty sad looking thing. Here is a plush of Zubal. A plush of the Abstraction. Or just, I guess, Kofmo Abstraction. I don't know why it, it looks oddly cute. And lastly, a plush of Kane, the star of the show, the digital of the circus. The main guy, I'm the main guy. That's not the voice, you'll have to wait to hear the voice. All right, before we get to the uh, sort of OC plushies, uh, here's just a couple random ones I own. Here's this little random Lego banana guy I bought because I thought he looked funny and I used it for that one segment of a video. Here is a plush of the Stranger Things smoke monster I bought because it looked cool and it had all the bendy limbs. However, this guy attracts so much dust you can see it, it's awful. Here's a little panda plush my friend bought for me. I really like this guy. Could you tell my favorite animal is a panda? Here is Blahaj, the Ikea shark. Wow, guys, I wonder what that means, guys. Whoa. Anyone know that funny video of the dog with the big head that goes, Yeah, I found this in a thrift store one day. It's pretty awesome. Here's a YouTube's plush of Slimesicle. Uh, to tell you the truth, I don't actually watch Slimesicle that much. I just thought this plush was really cute when I saw it on the website. And I think I bought it with a couple other things to get like a discount or something. And lastly, here's this little uh, hippo of a historical like ancient Egyptian statue. Uh, this is from, like, the Metropolitan Museum. I got this on a trip with my friends a couple weeks ago. Here's a puppet of Kermit the Frog I bought. Uh, I really like the Muppets. I really like Kermit. I really wanted this, and that's why I bought him. Nom, 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 nom. Who the heck are all these guys back here? They, 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 they gonna scare me. Here are three puppets from Melissa and Doug. Here is a puppet of Chef Pee Pee, or just a chef. More commonly known as Chef Pee Pee from... SML, or Super Mario Logan, whatever, revisionist history. Here is a puppet of the firefighter uh, that is fixated with a uh, cop outfit to resemble Brooklyn guy from SML. Uh, if anyone ever saw that SML Yaoi tweet, that, that was me. And then here's the third one, which is just kind of like a random guy uh, that obviously had the cop outfit on him, and I just kind of threw the firefighter outfit on him because... It was, it's like the leftovers to make Brooklyn Guy. I actually only really got Brooklyn Guy because I found him in a deal. It was a bundle with him and the, uh, the other guy for like 20 bucks. It was actually a really good deal. All right, now we are finally on to the original character plushies, which is the last category of the video. So yeah, here's the plush of Travis Rivera from Invade the Plushverse. Uh, I added the highlights, the highlights in the eyes recently because I think that it makes them look like they have more soul. Here's the plush of Abigail Rivera from the same series. Here's a plush of Simon Rivera, Travis and Abigail's father. Here's a plush of Eliza Rivera, their mother. Your mother! Uh, I guess just, there will probably be some minor spoilers for Invade the Plush Verse in here, however, nothing that's gonna like break the movie. Like all this stuff is gonna be shown in the trailer, so you won't really get spoiled. Unless you really wanna see that, you know, trailer first, I don't know. <laughs> Oh, God! In my camera. Here's a plush of Sam. 
and his uh, lesser <laughs> and his lesser uh, Mario counterpart. When I first made my OC, I wanted to have it be a combination of what I had done at the time, which was Mario and FNAF stuff. However, I don't really do Mario stuff anymore, and the fact that the OC is more or less used for uh, an original character series now, it made more sense to just make a completely new character for him. So his name is Sam now, and he is this bird. Here is Abigail's bird form, the big bird armor that she wears multiple times throughout the show. Here is Tomato the snail. Here is Tomato's true form. Uh, so for context, Tomato comes from the uh, sixth layer dimension. Uh, this is a dimension that is housed within Scaly, who ate Travis during Infinity War. Blech. He's a little parasite. Parasite! Uh, sorry, Venom joke. Okay. Here is the plush of Twisted Travis, or Helltorn Travis, as he was originally called by the man who designed him, Creeper Karate. He was the one who designed this guy, and I decided to make him a character in my videos. Thanks, creeps. And here is the plush of Luna the last of the main core cast. I guess to sort of bridge this gap, here is the plush of Anti-Travis. This is more closely based to his appearance in the first Travis Plush Productions movie with the little, tiny little paper dolls. But yeah, this is, this is Anti-Travis. And then here is the plush of the sort of fusion form of Tomato and Travis. Again, Venom, can you tell that that had a lot of, a lot of, um, inspiration for that movie. Here is the main antagonist of the series, Evil Mr. Potato Man, an icon in the plush tubing, I guess. Can't forget his mistress, Evil Mrs. Turnup Woman, or Professor uh, Colerabai. That smudged way more than I thought it was going to, to be honest, but yeah. I just forgot how to say that name. <laughs> But yeah, like Professor Cole were by. He's an instrument. You never separate them, because they are madly in love. <laughs> Here's the old participant. <laughs> Evil Mr. Potato Man's right-hand man, Todd. We love Todd in this house. Todd the goat. Little gumball Bonnie thing. <laughs> I don't know, man. Character design. And here is Plexi. Evil Mr. Potato Man's secretary. Fun fact, this is a character I actually made for a D&D &D campaign that I did with my friends, or was going to do, I, I don't think we ever actually did that, but I, uh, I did make this character for that, and I decided to use it for the series, because I really liked her design a whole lot. She's really cool, but yeah, she's got like keyboard and mouse on her, on her arm, the speakers, the TV head with the antenna, Plexi's really awesome scooting the potato gang to the right. Here is the gigantic uh, evil Mr. Potato Man mech bot that he operates whenever he's in large-scale battles. Got a claw arm. Uh, you have a giant cannon, like a blaster up here. You have a, another blaster on his arm that shoots more like lightning beams. This is more like lasers. Uh, his hat flips up and down. I need to replace the Velcro on that, actually, because I don't think that sticks super well anymore. Uh, he's got his boots. Super cool, super, super cool. Here are some more uh, OC type characters that have shown up between FNAF plush, other universes, and my own stuff. Here is Scorch, the main antagonist of FNAF plush season three, but also appeared in an episode of Invade the Plushverse because he's an OC, so I figured he earned a spot there. This is actually the second Scorch, and the first, uh, out of the ones I made, I guess, this is the second Scorch. The first Scorch is this one. It uses the head of the first Scorch. This is Scorch's uh, spirit that he becomes after he gets trapped in the Endless Inferno and manages to escape. From that same episode, here is the plush of Nightfall, another lone spirit that Scorch meets, befriends, and uh, seems to live with for the rest of time. Are they in a romantic relationship? I don't know. Or is it purely platonic? I don't know. You have to find out. Here is the plush of Egg Baby! You thought I forgot him, but no. He is upgraded from FNAF character to an original character. Show me all the personality that I got from Scott Cawthon's iteration of Egg Baby. That's what I thought. This is my guy now. I own him. Egg Baby's in the public domain. Sue me, Scott. Sue me. I dare you. Send me a DMCA. This is my character. I own him. Uh, here's also his little partner sidekick, Mo. 
from Froki's videos. This isn't really a plush per se, but here is Henry! He's this little uh, hand puppet that I got at a carnival one time, uh, and I decided to make a character in the videos. He looks very funny. Now we're moving on to sort of like my friends, characters, villains, whatever you may call it. Just kidding, I almost forgot. This is the potato bot that I used multiple times for Elon's Chain of Man's little uh, army of little guys. Potato bot. Now we're really moving on to that section. Here's a plush of Five Nights at Froki's. His long, uh, from, you know, his ongoing FNAF plush, six plush series. That's what you call it, FNAF six plush. Ah! Here is Pete the Pumpkin. One of Froki's characters, bendable arms. Here is Twisted Froki. See, that's the Froki, the Tommy Froki I was talking about earlier that I didn't have anymore. That's this guy. Here is the program. He's a little squished, unfortunately, but there he is. Here's a plush of Sockman. This character was created by Adam, or FNAF plush Fazbear, so you may have known them in the past. I don't really know what you knew them by. Here's a plush of Hexagod, created by Creeper Karate. Here's a flamingo plush, but uh, I treat as Feathers, who is a character created by SMF. And here is a plush of Dead Space. Bendable wires, his legs are kind of broken, which is why I'm being very careful. <laughs> but yeah, this is the design, sort of bipedal design that was made of him. Here is a half-finished plush of Damien Simmons. I had a whole gimmick of this guy where you can move the eyes around, kind of like the original, but obviously those pieces aren't on the plush right now. And here's a plush of Tuxedo Bob. I will not elaborate. This is made by Ty. There you go. Here is a plush of Kevin. A character that was seen on Froki's channel quite often, made by Jacob Kid Gamer. Didn't I do it for you? Here's a plush of a couple people I know. Here's a plush of Super Laser Guy. Here's a plush of Creeper Karate. Here's a plush of SMF. His uh, snout is very high here. Here's a plush of Blizz Smokey One. Here's a plush of Expert. I really like this one because you can shake him around and his little lighting bolts go everywhere. And then here is a series of three plushies. Uh, you may know these guys as the Super Warino Bros, Dario, Dreamer, and Nico. Uh, these three were the first YouTubers I ever met and collaborated with all the way back in season two. So yeah. Uh, I made little plushies of them. Love you guys. Well, I mean, I bought two of them and made Dreamer because he has the shirt, but yeah. Here are a few characters that are up and coming in the Invade the Plush First movie. Here is Bullet, a long snake-like creature that was designed by my friend SMF. He's got a big sort of gun chamber on his tail. He looks a lot like that one guy from Rango, but he's really cool. I like him. Here is a plush of Sir Lithodide, a night crab. You can see his little face under there. Ah, his legs. <laughs> yeah, his legs are kind of fragile too. And here is a plush of the character Jinx, who is a samurai. She's cool. And lastly, to cap off the sort of invade the plush first slash plush tuber characters, we have Pyro Shark. If you're unaware, Pyro Shark is a very old YouTuber, uh, an old, very old FNAF Plus tuber from like the Gen 1 era of FNAF Plus tubing that mysteriously disappeared. And so I made him into a character for YouTube videos. What? He wasn't gonna do anything with it. Actually, this is more heavily taken from the stuff my friend SMF wrote, but I'm using him in my stuff because, you know, we collaborate on these kinds of things. Come on, it's a collaborative effort. All right, three more. Here is a plush of myself. And there's also one, if you saw the video yesterday, coming to Onage. Uh, yeah, there's another picture of the rough prototype. There's also one on my Instagram. You guys get to put her together like a little puzzle. Here is a sort of like articulated puppet I made of myself as well. She's really neat. Uh, bend the balloons, you can turn the head, tilt it up and down. The fingers are poseable. This is really cool. Just made this for fun. 
And lastly, we have the exact same thing, but for Evil Mr. Potato Man. A more updated design that was sort of workshop between me and my friend SMF. He's got a lot of con contribution in here. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's it, guys. That is all of them. Every single plush that I own. All of them. All of them are in these montage of shots between the big room and the small rooms. This is absolutely everything. Hoy! This is a long, long video. This took almost two days to film. It's pretty dang incredible. Good lord. Um, obviously, like I said, teasing the official plush I'm releasing on Onage. Uh, but yeah, so that you guys can own your own little, little plushie for me. It'd be really cool if you did. That actual ad, though, will be in the future, eventually, at some point. But uh, yeah, so that was my 2024 and probably final plush collection. So, yeah. Whew. Uh, here's the total count I figured out in editing. Whoa, that's a huge number. Oh my god, that's a giant number. So yeah, uh, maybe this is the biggest collection on YouTube? I don't know, maybe. Or at least the biggest documented collection. Um, but yeah. Thanks guys for watching. Hope you all have a fantastic year. Here's to 2024 and to more videos. Also, if you want to go see more of what I'm doing and you didn't see the video yet, there's an update video that released yesterday. Uh, you can go, you can go watch that. So, goodbye!